Our guy Jaden Daniels, eight touchdowns. Eight touchdowns on Saturday night against Georgia State. Uh, and that's crazy that he did that against Georgia State. He, yeah, he lit up Georgia State. Uh, eight touchdowns is eight touchdowns. Yeah, but especially against Georgia State. On today's part of my take, week 11 in the NFL. We're going to start with fastest two minutes. We're going to talk about every game. The Super Bowl Browns? Are we thinking Super Bowl Browns? We're thinking Soupy. Super Bowl Browns? Niners still looking like they're rolling? Bills get back on track? We get the first bad half of C.J. Stroud and the Texans still win. Maybe a sign that they're very much legit. Uh, we're going to get to all the games. Oh, also Tommy DeVito, Jersey Juice. We'll get to that as well. We're going to get to all the games. We also have Who's Back of the Week. And it's all brought to you by our friends at Blue Chew. Have better sex with Blue Chew. Blue Chew is currently the only place to go for chewable versions of sildenafil and tadalafil. These ingredients help men achieve stronger, harder, and longer-lasting erections for sexual activity. It helps combat all forms of ED, which also includes performance anxiety and also maintaining an erection long enough for sex. The chewable tablets have the same active ingredients you'd find in Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Blue Chew is all about having confidence when it comes time to perform and having happy and help healthy relationships. A Blue Chew subscription includes a free online consultation, 24-7 medical support, a prescription if approved, and discreet delivery straight to your door every month. Chew it and do it. Use code PMT for your first month free. Chew it and do it. Use code PMT for your first month free. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take. Today is Monday, November 20th, week 11. Whoop! Whoop! I gotta, I gotta save my voice, Teej. Whoop! <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop! Some thread. We start in Pittsburgh, where I would walk 500 miles, Garrett, just to have a piece of... Like his is, is stop me if you heard this before, but Miles Garrett in a helmet. We're back in the news this week. You see those sweatpants? They were pretty big, pretty big. Kenny G. Pickett took some costly alto sacks as the Steelers' offense struggled. It was a punt battle as Big Ten West game broke out, but Dustin Anthony Hopkins was able to eat the Steelers' liver with some fava beans and a nice candy. <laughs> As he kicked the game-winning field goal, screaming afterwards, Bulls Peru. It's an anagram, Clarice, for Super Bowl. Browns 13, Steelers 10. Whoop, whoop. Down to Duval, where Calvin Ridley Scott returned from his Napoleon exile to score twice. The Jaguars put another brick in the wall of their defense as they recovered two fumbles, saying, I'll see you on the Foyasade of the moon. Jeffrey Bill Simmons scored, but it was too little too late as people are asking, are the Jaguars having a moment? Are we sure the Titans aren't bad? Trevor Lawrence kind of reminds me of that movie Teen Wolf. Looks really intimidating, but I'm not so sure that the team from Hoosiers would mop the floor with them. Jaguars 31, Titans 14. Isn't that kind of weird? It's weird. Our good personal friend, Bill Simmons. My, my personal friend, Bill. Over to Houston where the Greg... Do, 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 looking out my back torch. Had some major CCRs, catches, conversions, and receptions. The Whitney Houston Texans just want to dance with somebody who loves me. Thinking back to their previous head coach who got them into a position to draft boy genius CJ Stroud. Member? Member Singleberries? As Devin reminded everyone why he's good at football. Going for 112 and a score on the way to a Houston Texans win 21. 16. In Carolina, people are asking if the price is right as the Panther season is on a cliffhanger while David Tepper is spay and neutering his coaches, keeping their balls on his desk. Before the game, Jerry Jones put Jimmy Johnson into the ultimate glory hole, the Dallas Ring of Honor, and there wasn't a dry eye in the house. 
Darren Pituitary Bland hit a personal growth spurt this year, making more house calls than Jerry Jones' favorite strippers. Is Dak back, or did he just play the Panthers? Cowboys, 33. The Panthers, 10. Up to Detroit, where Fields was back just in time to lose another game. Jared was goffly bad, then goffly good as the game swung late in the fourth quarter. The Bears did their best impression of the Phoenix Suns locker room, having four men scoring. And Dan Campbell's soup had his team playing with a lot of concentrate as they scored twice late in the fourth to take the lead. As for the Bears, people are asking, is it too late now to say sorry for hiring Matt Bieberflus? Because yeah, he let everyone down. Lions 31, Bears 26. We go down south to Miami where Antonio Pierce Brosnan is leaving no doubt about his firing coaching style as he has the Raiders rushing for approximately .007 yards per carry. The Dolphins took the lead when Salvan scored late in the second. Cool clock, Ahmed. Want to show that at the White House? While well, Tua fast, Tua furious Tango Vailoa had some ludicrous cornrows and it was Jalen Ramsey Bolton who finished the job neutering the Raiders' comeback with a late interception. The Dolphins 20. The Eight or 13. Up to the frozen tundra where the seat is getting warm for Matt LaFleur. Stone Marcus Smart grit and grinded his way to a 51 yard score, and it looked like the San Diego Superchargers were back. Jaden Creed took the Packers higher with a score, and the game was tight going into the fourth when Romeo and Juliet Dobbs scored late putting the Chargers season officially in dire straits. Brandon Staley, have you heard this one? I haven't heard it yet, Boom. More like Brandon Faley. That's a good one, Boom. Because that guy fucking stinks. To you. Packers 23, Chargers 20. To Raul John Maryland, where Raekwon Barkley unloaded all 36 chambers as the big Blue Tang clan looked to wrap up their first win in a month. Let us be the first to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. As Brian DeBolo Dean is getting ready for the big meal, allowing two sacks of mayo. As David and the rest of the commies defense had Tommy DeCito looking like a snack. Much like my close personal friend Dick Cheney's good friend, the commanders are no longer in the hunt after getting their face blasted off by using a shotgun incorrectly. Michael Sam Howe was not allowed to shower with his teammates after the game because there was no hot water at FedEx Field. And for the first time this year, Ron Rivera's team was unable to get rid of sweat. The Giants, 31. The Commanders, 19. For the last game, we're going to go out to our correspondent, Connor Memes, in western New York. We head up to Buffalo, where the Jets challenged the Bills and blew up shortly after takeoff. <laughs> Zach Wilson is fucking ass. Good one, Boom. Thanks, Steve. The Jets turned to Tim didn't boil for more than 10 minutes, resulting in a noodle arm. <laughs> Khalil Shakira was on tonight, and his hips didn't lie, and I'm starting to feel an 85-yard touchdown. Robert tossed Salad had to tackle Zach Wilson before eating shit. No one circles the, the wagons, wagons like the Buffalo Bills. Bills 32, Jet 6. Thank you, memes. Good one, boom. All right, and that was Fastest Two Minutes from Week 11, brought to you by our friends at Chevy. There's a new family with unstoppable grit, and they are the official partners of the Pardon My Take family, and that is the Chevy Silverado ZR2 family. The first ever Silverado heavy-duty ZR2 joins the franchise to make Chevy ZR2 the only truck brand with a full lineup of trucks ready for wherever your off-road adventures take you with exclusive Multimatic DSSV tampers, rugged mud terrain tires, and up to 14 available camera views. The Chevy Silverado ZR2 and Silverado HD ZR2 a family with commanding and unstoppable grit. Head to Chevy.com right now. Check out Chevy Silverado and the family of Chevy ZR2s, the official trucks, a part of my take. We are a Chevy podcast. If you're thinking about becoming a truck person, well, Chevy's the place to be. So head over to Chevy.com. Check out Chevy Silverado and the family of Chevy ZR2s, the official trucks, a part of my take. Okay, week 11 in the books. And uh, we have something a little different to start this show. Uh, to set the stage before we get to all of the games, uh, our good friend Jersey Jerry and I, we put in a TD parlay, $2,000 to win $100,000. We hit the first three legs, and the last leg is Javante Williams. Javante's got the ball. All right. That could have won the game. We're going to reset. Let's get to uh, week 11. And like I said, if we somehow get lucky here uh, and we get back to this spot, we'll, we'll tell you what happens. But uh, It was P.I. Yeah, it was P.I. It should have been P.I. 
most painful death ever. Most painful death, death, death. I don't subscribe. I can't say the word death. Right I don't now. usually subscribe to the theory that the refs hate certain teams, but I do think that the refs hate Sean Payton. I do too. I believe in that a hundred percent. Because he's probably a little annoying, where he's like, "I know the rules better than you," and he's got the smirk on his yeah. face. Yeah, yeah, and he's, he's got pro- he's got like a slappable face. Yeah, and he probably like I, Sean Payton. Now, I may be speaking out of turn, but like it wouldn't shock me if Sean Payton like followed like the refs' daughters on Instagram. You know yeah. that kind of stuff where you're like, "Come on, dude." Yeah, comments. Like, yeah, like with the with the eyes. With the ref's the daughter's like a like a sophomore at USC, and Sean Payton somehow follows her. Yeah, it's like, wow, you're a really good volleyball player. Yeah, right, right. So I, I can understand Respect why refs that. don't like him. All right, let's talk week eleven. We had some great games. Feels like uh, some some statement wins, and the the number one statement win, the first game we're going to talk about: Browns thirteen, Steelers ten, the Cleveland Browns. Are seven and three. The Cleveland Browns win with a their third string quarterback in DTR. The Cleveland Browns are for real. They are. They are. And they're they're fun. Their defense is fun to watch. Uh Miles Garrett had another great game today. Credit to Miles Garrett for picking up a Steelers quarterback's helmet and not using it to swing on his head. Because there was a moment when Kenny Pickett uh he he did a, a QB sneak for a first down. Helmet came off. Miles Garrett picked it up. And then the Steelers O line went over and immediately confiscated it. Yeah, from us, like, no, don't do this again. He was like, I'm not doing it again. We've seen I'm this not before. doing it again. And and Miles Garrett, uh, we alluded to it in the fastest two minutes. Did a video this week in front of the reporters where he was shirtless with gray sweatpants on, and just cock, just like in everyone's face. Yeah, that's why he's not a basketball player actually, because he couldn't do a he couldn't go between the legs because his his yeah. his big old penis would just knock the ball away. That that was one of those moments where you can't even be mad at Miles because like he just. Guess what? He's got it. If, listen, if I had a hammer like that, I would be wearing gray sweatpants all the time. All the time. All the time. And gray shirtless. Sweatpants. And I'd be shirtless. Would, athletic, gray athletic shorts even. I always think about that. If I had a six, sick body, like a six pack, I would be shirtless. All Like in this office, the minute we start shooting hoops, I'd just rip off my shirt and be like, yeah, pass me the ball. Yeah. I, I would I'll actually, be skins. I disagree. I think I would do what Adam Sandler does, which is he's like pretty jacked up. But he always wears big, flowy clothes. Yeah, but he doesn't have a six-pack. And then I think he's got like a four-pack. And then once every like two years, he'll play basketball and take he'll take it off. And all of his friends are like, yo, what the fuck, man? Yeah. I'm talking like if I had Miles Garrett, Garrett's body. I'd yeah. be driving my car shirtless. Like just basically the minute I get home shirtless. If I had Miles Garrett's body, I think I would ruin it within uh, maybe two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks of living my lifestyle. One Sunday. And he would just look like me right now. Yeah, one Sunday. Uh, but this game. So... The the Browns, uh, Stefanski kind of went into a little bit of turtle mode in the second half. It it felt like a Big Ten West game where it was just field position, field position, field position. I though was I thought the Browns like obviously their defensive line is elite and control the line of scrimmage, but their offensive line played lights out in terms of they didn't like run for an insane amount of yards. I think they were close to a hundred, but DTR was only sacked once. The final drive. He was able to move the ball down the field and get him into uh, field goal range. Like the Browns are, I think they've lost two or three starters, day week one starters on their offensive line, and they're still able to. Like that's why I like the Browns because there isn't a lot of flash, but they control both lines of scrimmage, and you win football games that way. It was a it was a great game winning drive by DTR, and I think that in the second half, both teams were just pretty much not trying to be the one that made the mistake because both defenses are really good. Yes. So they're like, DTR, please do not get a sack fumble. Please do not throw a bad interception. Just let's let's be conservative. Let's punt the ball. A punt was as good as a win uh, for either team in the second half. And then at the end when he had to do it, he did it. And they're, they're kind of like the same football team. Right. The Browns and the Steelers. Right. Where Steelers fans, if it's like the bus meme, the Steelers fans are the ones looking at the dark side being like, our defense is awesome. Our quarterback hasn't played well. Uh, but we have a winning record. And then the Browns, they're like at the light side saying the exact same thing. Yes. Uh, but, yeah, the, the Browns' defense is good enough to do some serious damage. And they got Joe Flacco. They got Joe Flacco. And much to the dismay of RG3, who had photoshops whipped up, ready to go, of him in Browns uniforms. I heard that he was going to get the call. Much to his dismay, he did not. He was they, showing off this weekend running with Dabo down on the field. That was his That was his workout tape yes. that he put out there for the, for the Browns. 40 time. But it would be so awesome if Joe Flacco won a Super Bowl with these Browns. And as of Friday, I put a $1,000 future on the Browns, thinking Ooh. that they were going to get Joe Flacco. So it pays out 50-1. to one. 
Love already, it. Already down to 40 to 1. I'm making money on Joe Flacco's already. worth that much. Joe Flacco gave a little bump and also probably this win. DTR looking not incapable of doing the job probably helped out a little bit there. Yeah, but he, he, he looks okay. If Joe Flacco wins a Super Bowl and he, he does like his normal Joe Flacco thing where he doesn't make any mistakes, gets the pass interferences, that would contribute so much to the Flacco discourse. I would, I, it would be, it would make my, Probably my entire year. It's a, it, it would be a legacy career. Defining, yeah, it would be leg- your, it legacy probably defining would. playoffs for you. At that point, he's won two Super Bowls. And he probably would get a long term contract with the Browns. He's elite. Give him a 10 year <laughs> extension. They just were like, fuck it. Here's yeah. 300 million, Joe. Yeah, it'd be, man, it would be awesome. He's got he, five. It's probably because he's got five kids now. And he's like, I really just want to get out of the house. So it, I'm down to play. And it's crazy to think the Browns fans had the most roller coaster. I mean, the whole season's been roller coaster with Nick Chubb and the win, loss, win, loss. Deshaun out for a little, but then coming back, looking good, getting season ending surgery. Like this, this week was a microcosm for their year that it's just absolute madness. But like the Browns, if you're a Browns fan, I think where you're sitting right now, and it's not a bad place to be, I think in the back of your head, you're like, yes. We don't really have a quarterback right now. Like DTR, young, Joe Flacco, old. It's going to be tough. But with that defense, no one wants to play you. No one wants to go up against the Browns. No. And you can basically tell yourself, and I think it's not that wrong. I don't even think you're like faking yourself out when you say it, that if we have if we get into the playoffs and we have a chance, like our defense is so good that we can win ugly games against pretty much any team. So every time you bring up the Joe Flacco elite conversation, it's like, well, he won a Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, well, guess what? So did Trent Dilfer. This is the Trent Dilfer model that yeah. the Browns are going to go with right now. And, they're yeah, their defense is definitely good enough to play with any team in the league. Late-stage Peyton Manning. Yeah, exactly, like that Broncos team. And, yeah. and the Browns, so today they beat the Steelers. Um, they beat the Ravens and the Steelers in consecutive weeks for the first time in the entire history of their franchise. Did you see – now this is where it's clearly uh, bothering Steelers fans, and we do actually have Jersey Jerry here, which maybe we'll have him say a little something at the end here. Uh, Big Ben was live for this game. Oh, really? Big Ben was live for this game. Who taught him how to go live on I, Instagram? I don't know. He was live for this game. No, he was on YouTube, I think, with, with his uh, podcast. So he was sitting in his basement, and – Browns fans, you should like if you could maybe make an NFT of of the last three seconds of this game, it is so worth it because Big Ben is sitting there and he's narrating uh, the Hail Mary and, you know, the pitch back and everything. And then he just goes, this is the Brown Super Bowl. That's the Brown Super Bowl for them. And that's the best the best feeling in the world if you're a Browns fan, because, you know, when someone breaks out that this is your Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. That loss bothers them. Yeah. Like, he was bothered by that. There have been a few of those on this show. Yes. But, yeah, that, that, I can imagine that bothering Big Ben because he absolutely loved to kill the Browns. It was his favorite thing ever. And Love beat the shit out of him. And just salty, like, the immediate, oh, well, this, oh, <sighs> Browns, that's your Super Bowl. That's been, the it, saltiest response you can give, and you know, like, it's, it's almost – you know, on Twitter, it's like, oh, you're triggered, you're mad. No, no, that is as mad as you can get. It was like Big Ben putting a walking boot on his ego saying that. Yeah. Uh, there was, yeah, there was, there's a lot to be happy about if you're a Browns fan, for sure, right? You now. should like, enjoy you, this. You can enjoy it. You can, you can think all the thoughts. You can think about, a, I give Browns fans permission to think, like, maybe we could possibly win a Super Bowl. And I looked at their schedule, and I, I think they probably have at least four more wins in the rest of their season, which would get them to eleven wins. Like yeah. they're they have the the Broncos and the Rams coming up on the road, so you split that. That's a win. Jaguars and Bears, you're going to beat the Bears, so that's two. And then you finish with Texans, Jets, Bengals. Like you could probably win two out of three of those. I imagine that they probably will get to eleven wins. But I could see them getting to twelve. Listen, the it's de- awesome. The defense is good enough. The defense is 100% legit. And then after the game, Mike Ford, yeah, Jerry, maybe you can speak on this a little bit. See what Mike Ford did at the end of the game? This is torture for Jerry. Browns we're watching player. a bet lose, and we're also know. just he, like, uh, sucking the Browns' dick right in front of he him. Took a, he took a terrible towel from the stands, gave them a it's Browns. It's not Jerome Ford? Yeah, Jerome well, Yeah, Jerome Ford. Mike Ford's the former Yankee, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Jerome Ford took the towel uh, from the Steelers fan, handed them a Browns towel, and then he took the terrible towel and he wiped his ass with it oh. on the sidelines <laughs> with a terrible towel. Yeah, I mean it's Ben's right. You know, this is the Brown Super Bowl. Oh, okay. So um, you're you're also triggered. Yeah, I mean I'm not triggered. Yeah, just, yeah, right. Yeah. You know, no linebackers, uh, no Minka, um, poor quarterback play. Listen, Steelers have a lot of winnable games on their schedule too. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, the only thing I'm mad about with this game is I really, really wish the 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 Browns ended up kicking what like a 
maybe it was like a 35 yard field goal to win this game. They didn't really need those la- those extra like 15 yards. Mm-hmm. I was really hoping because they they outgained the Steelers by 10 yards. Yeah. If the Steelers had lost, yeah, but had outgained the Browns, <laughs> it would have been so perfect. It, but we yeah. do have the Steelers. They have they have continued the streak. They have been outgained in every single game this year. Mm-hmm. Um, Jerry, where so where are you at? You think the Steelers? You got to get off the mat, fight some more. You're yeah, still no, still in the playoffs right now. Yeah, they're not. They're not, the season's not dead yet. But um, if they drop if they drop this next game to the Bengals, season's cooked. Watching that offense is just so painful. Yeah, no, it's, it's tough. So you you have not had fun watching a Steelers game in years. Twenty eighteen. Yeah. Also, it was it was Mike Ford, Jake. Oh, double, oh, have double fact Ford? check. Yes. Wow, Ford. you got me. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Warren should get all the carries. Yeah, he is he is the Steelers offense that the the second half when he had that 75-yard touchdown run, he's so explosive. He's what you need for that offense because you need some type of spark, and he's all spark. And they didn't use him at all on that last um, minute drive at all. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, That's and crazy. he had that great stiff arm today too. Yeah. He's without a doubt their best running back. It, it, and it, it, we don't know if it's because he's actually that much faster than a normal player on a football field, or if he's just that much faster than Najee Harris. Yeah. It, it also, um, it is true sicko stuff, but I do love watching a game like that where you know that punts matter so much. Yeah. And field position, like a punt out of the end zone is a disaster. Yeah. You th- need to down your punts in the five-yard line and just and get the ball back and basically punt your way to a field goal. The game is like just a slow war of attrition to see if you can maybe – finagle your way into having great field position for the very last drive of the game and i love it and that's I all love you it. i love those type of games um all right next game texans 21 cardinals 16 we had cj stroud's first bad half of football this year in the second half he was phenomenal in the first half he had there was a moment at halftime of the early games where cj stroud had more yards personally than any other team playing at the time he had 259 yards in the first half including like an absolute dime to tank dell and in the second half he was not good he had he had three interceptions this game uh all three were in plus territory i think two of them were in the red zone one was at like the cardinals 26 Mm -hmm. afterwards he was asked about it and he said uh steph curry doesn't ever stop shooting i'm gonna keep letting it fly so gunslinger i like that i I like like it too well that mentality is only good if you're good yeah. That mentality sucks if you suck. Yes. It's like I'm wearing a Jordan Poole jersey right now. That is also his mentality. Yes. Um, not necessarily the right one that you want to have if you're not very good at playing that sport. Yes. But, but much uh, – I, I guess C.J. Stroud has earned the right to just keep shooting at this point. He's that good where it's like I want to go down having C.J. Stroud. I trust him to take chances. And he had his welcome to the NFL moment today. Yes. And it's always good when your welcome to the NFL moment is also a game in which you win. Mm-hmm. In which he bounced back and win the Double game. Double welcome to his, the NFL moment. So he got absolutely smoked on a sack that I thought maybe he got concussed because he did have a couple of really bad interceptions in the second half. Uh, I think o- maybe only one of them. No, maybe both of them were after that. Uh, but he also had his welcome to the NFL moment where you know you've arrived when we start making a big deal of your pregame routine. Mm-hmm. So he plays like 16 sports in a in a pregame routine where he's like whipping, it looked like a tennis ball on top of a – a stick. Yeah, it's like he something was doing the hip see, thrust. An exercise you'd see Jameis Winston doing with his personal trainer and like three dogs in the backyard. Yeah, or That's like a BDSM on. like dungeon. Yeah, yeah, he yeah he was like practicing foul shots. Yeah, it was all he was like throwing balls into the kicking net. It was great. But was, that is the fun. Yeah, that's like the sign you've really made it when we start making freaking out over your pregame routine. But so for this Texans game, they did not play their A plus game, and weirdly. I'm like more confident in the Texans going forward because they prove that they can win games when C.J. Stroud isn't perfect. Their defense kind of bowed up, stopped the Cardinals three times on fourth down in the second half. And I'm like, listen, when you can win when you're not great, that's a sign of a really good team. We said back in October that there's a chance that this team makes the playoffs. I'm I'm almost ready to go one step further. I think that the Texans can win the division. Yeah. Because they play the Jaguars next weekend, right? They that's already the beat game. them once. They beat them one time. If they beat the Jaguars, they, I believe, are in first place in that division. They, um, right now, they're six and four. I think the Jaguars are seven and three. So yeah, so yeah, they would they have, would be. they would have the tiebreaker. So That's they'd be a big game. The, the Texans could win that division. Like C.J. Stroud is that good. Yeah, that's a big fucking game. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for that game. Uh, as for the Cardinals, I don't know. Kyler looked awesome at times, and then he looked 
kind of short sometimes too. Yeah, uh, well, a couple it, balls batted. There's a lot of short guys on the Cardinals. That's kind of how they operate. Yeah, he when he throws a pass to Rondell Moore, I think the the like average height on that play is five foot six. Yeah, the the Cardinals are are officially though like they with Kyler Murray back, they are in full frisky can can pick off anyone mode. They look like a competent football team. Yeah, when Kyler's back. That's the best you can say about it. And again, this is like as good as it gets for the Cardinals. Much like your Bears, when you watch them, you want to see your quarterback play well. You want to see your team fight a little bit. And then ideally, you'd like to see them lose at the end to protect your draft pick. Yeah, exactly. So good job, Cardinals. as a win-win yep. all around. Uh, all right, next game. Giants 31, Commanders 19. Tommy DeVito. Tommy DeVito day. The guy has what he calls Jersey Juice. So Jersey Juice is to have confidence in the face of difficult situations. That was the motto all week in the Giants facility. He was telling everyone, I got Jersey Juice. Mm -hmm. And he came out. I like Jersey Juice. I like that phrase. And he T threw. I call it t Tomito Sauce. Yeah, he's. I mean, he played. He outplayed Sam Howell. He threw three touchdowns. He now has more touchdown passes than uh, any QB playing in New Jersey this season. So that's Zach Wilson. Obviously, Aaron mm -hmm. Rodgers got hurt. Daniel Jones, Tyrod Taylor. Uh, he, yeah, he also has five touchdown. The five touchdown passes he has this year are the most touchdown passes by a Giants starter in his first two starts since 1950. He's Tommy got, DeVito might be a franchise quarterback. Again, he's got two starts, and he has more touchdowns than Zach Wilson. Yeah. We started every game except the first, in which he played like three and a half quarters. Yes. So Tommy yeah, DeVito might listen, be a franchise quarterback. We, we made Tommy DeVito look like a franchise quarterback today. I was not confident going into this game. The commanders should not be favored by nine points against anybody ever. I'm going to say that like in perpetuity for the rest of the existence of the franchise. Um I was not confident. We lost the Giants once already this year. Didn't surprise me that we lost again. Our defense looked like ass. Uh, we got we actually got a lot of sacks. We sacked Tommy nine times today. Mm -hmm. So knocked him around a little bit, and then just on the back end, uh, just completely. I think we played man to man for the entire game, and then Tommy just found the holes where he could. And credit to Tommy DeVito, he had a good game today. He looked like a serviceable quarterback. I'm just going to quote Magic Johnson because I feel like Magic Johnson um, said it the absolute best. Wow! Exclamation point. My Washington Commanders turned the ball over six times today and gave the Giants twenty-four points off turnovers. We lost thirty-one to nineteen. I agree, Magic. I agree. That's a perfect encapsulation of the game. Uh, it's tough to win when you don't score more points than your opponent. And he fired that off like three hours after the game. I that's been the highlight of of my season really as a Commanders fan is just seeing Magic Johnson tweet a game recap. It's like, beautiful. Way way later after the game, uh, and then post game. There was no water in the commander's locker room, so players couldn't shower. So uh, the Giants and commander's locker rooms, they didn't have hot water at all. And the team said, we basically lost hot water. We tried to repair it. We couldn't fix it during the game, so sorry. This Ryan Fitzpatrick's wa watching this. He's like, I really wish I had played a full season there. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of my style is to just, just go stink and drink afterwards. Mm -hmm. But um, the commanders are ass. They're ass-ass. So this is different than last week. They're ass-ass. We're... We lost to the worst team in football twice. I'm pretty sure that means we're the worst team in football. Yeah. Um, I guess my biggest question for you is Sam Howell was bad today. Yep. And it was up against a defense that had given up 79 points in the last two games. Yep. Um, how do you feel about that? Was it, oh, they kind of overlooked the Giants? Or are you a little concerned because it felt like a step backwards? He'd been playing great ball, and then the sacks came back. It's a and step back. Three interceptions came back. Like, it was bad. It's a step he, Tommy back. Tommy DeVito outplayed him. Outplayed him. It, it was a big step backwards. But I'm, I still like Sam. I still think we focus on Sam. We build around Sam. I, I have not changed. He's still the guy. Sam's the guy. He had a bad day. You ever have a bad, bad day? Yeah. It happens. He bad had, days happen. He had a bad day today, and a lot of people had a bad day today. Yeah. And I'm hoping that the day was bad enough to the point where Josh Harris just says, okay, I'm going to fire Ron and Jack Del Rio. Mm. That's, that would make my Thanksgiving. That would be great. If we went into Dallas on Thursday – let be enemy like let be enemy coach for the rest of the season. Yeah. Because he I think he deserves a tryout to be a head coach. We want to see if if he's the kind of guy that we're going to keep around because Ron's got one year left on his contract. Be enemy, I don't know what his contract is right now, but um I assume he's going to be here next year in theory. We need to figure out if we want to make him the head coach or not. Give him a shot from this point out to the regular season ends. Like that's your team. Yeah. That's your team. Let's see what you got. Yeah. Um Hank. Yes. Survivor. So you, Hank was on a bye this week. Hank actually, he he is now a, a true loser because he did say to me, he's like, man, having a bye week is nice. And I was like, yep. 
when you don't have to watch your game, your your bad team on Sunday, it's it's a comforting feeling. Yeah, stress free. Yeah. But you did have stress. I did have stress. I was in a survivor league. There was like thirty people left. Uh and I picked the commanders. Shouldn't have done that. Tommy DeVito, I, they didn't even let him pass for like two games. Yeah. Sam, awesome, Sammy Howell's man. the guy. They had a hundred sacks. Yeah. It's and actually they got blown out. It's actually the it first. It did get blown out. It wasn't even close. It's the first time in 39 years that a team gave up nine sacks and then won a game by double digits. You yeah. assume going into it, the worst case scenario is a sweat. It it also and it wasn't even it, it wasn't, wasn't even a sweat. Yeah, no, the Giants were covering easily and winning the game easily pretty much the entire game. I think it was one point. It was like 14-12. Uh, it also is a good reminder that tanking doesn't happen in the NFL because I saw a clip of Tommy DeVito and Saquon after the game. And they were as happy as could be. Like, they're not going to tank. They're yeah. out there playing their balls off. Saquon was awesome today. He caught two touchdowns. He was everywhere. Uh, do we do we think Tommy DeVito has played himself into having a uh, job as a backup going forward? I think, I think we so. just need to remember that this is the Washington Commanders that he played against. Yes. So keep that just in the back of your head when you're evaluating the TD film. No, I know, but still, do you think he has? I mean, uh, he's going to have a chance. Yeah, yeah, he's got a chance. He's got he's a not, roster spot. Yeah, he's got a roster spot. Listen, it's a backup. Listen, Tommy, if, if in you, camp, if he's you not had the worst backup ever, if you had looked at the last two games that he played, I would say like definitely no. So now it's a conversation that we're having. Which QB in New York would you rather have? Josh Allen, Tommy DeVito, New Jersey. You gotta say New Jersey. New Jersey. They'll get you. Yeah, there. Tommy DeVito. Easy. It is. Uh, it is kind of funny that he has more touchdown passes than Daniel Jones who how big was Daniel Jones contract it was like 160 million 140 I think it was 160 million four years 160 million and Tommy DeVito gets paid forty four thousand uh, dollars an episode yeah <laughs> and then <laughs> he he probably didn't need to shower after the game he probably goes to his mom's house to shower right yeah he did when you when you understand what he like I was reading more about it he is right when he said that he probably couldn't find a house closer to the facility than his parents' house. Yeah. A nine-minute drive. Yeah, and and also in that part of the country, you're paying a shitload of money. So good for I, – I do not make fun of him at all for staying at home. Like, I, that's the dream. And now he has a quarterback win. We talked about Tommy DeVito being, you know, a future, you know, PE teacher or high school coach, yep. having the jersey in his, lock, in, in his uh, office, being like, hey, remember the time I – Went out and started against the Cowboys. Yep. Don't worry about the score. Now he can be like, remember the time? He's got a, probably got a game ball. Probably got a game ball that he can put in his office and be like, look at this. I won a football game in the NFL. Yeah, I um, I actually reached out to my mom, too. She was texting me during the game watching it, and she said, this team just frustrates me. They seem unable to take advantage of opportunity. They always screw it up. She understands. My mom knows ball. Yeah, yeah, she does. That was, that was a, a tough game for the commander. So are we... There's no more yoffs. Uh, we're out of the hunt. Yeah, we're we're firmly out of the hunt. I well, listen. If we if we steal one from the Cowboys, <laughs> I think now we have to steal every game for the rest. Yeah, of you got to uh, steal them all. I think it's uh, uh, all steal. It's a must steal. You must this steal is a, this all is a, of them. A must steal game. Yeah. From now until the end of the season, we're not a very good team. In fact, we're a bad team. In fact, we're an ass team. In fact, we're an ass ass team. Just it was just super ass watching it. No, I think ass ass is worse. Yeah, it might be worse. We are ass ass. Ass ass. We're going ass to ass right now. Damn. We're hu we're human centipeding our own butthole. Damn. That's tough. Yeah. Um shout out Jersey Juice. He's got a Ravel probably already trademarked that. That fucking slime ball. Yeah, Jersey Juice. It's just it's just Red Bull vodka. <laughs> Jersey juice is yeah, a little marinara on it. Too. Mm -hmm. I like it. Jersey juice. Uh okay. It is very Jersey to He's so Jersey that he's like Jersey juice. It's like New Jersey's the one place that people t like have to face adversity. Yep. Unlike anywhere else. Yep. That's what we do. Jersey. In Jersey. Yeah. Jersey. What, what kind of adversity is Tommy DeVito facing? Tommy DeVito. He, he did have to. He did have to be the quarterback at Syracuse and then transfer to Illinois. It feels that's like some adversity. My guess is Tommy DeVito's had a pretty good life. No, that's, that's adversity right just, there. Well, his parents look awesome. I know, but again, quarterbacking for Syracuse is adversity. Yeah, um, McNabb did it. Yeah, and then having to quarterback for Brett Bielma, some adversity. That would be adversity. There's some yeah. adversity there. I bet you they had some great dinners, though. Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, next up, Dolphins 20, Raiders 13. Dolphins uh, kind of almost blew this game. Uh, their offense was clunky. They were sloppy, some turnovers. But their defense, 
Their defense looked good. And I know it's Aiden O'Connell, but this is why I kind of had the Dolphins on uh, taking them off fraud watch. Fraud watch. Uh, Jalen Ramsey changes everything for the Vic Fangio defense. He was awesome. Had two picks. And, I yeah, like if the Dolphins can – play the offense they played at the beginning of the year and the defense like they're playing right now they are a formidable team so since Jalen Ramsey's back there averaging giving up only 13 points per game which yeah is, it's pretty good it, it unlocks everything for Vic Fangio and in a weird way beating bad teams by like a, a very small margin makes me more likely to take you off the fraud watch than if you had blown them out right because like they, they, then they the actually, hype gets so crazy yeah yeah if they had if they had put up 70 points and won this game I'd be like okay big deal you know what I'll backtrack a little bit because I said against bad teams. This was actually the Dolphins' first win against a 500 team this year. Oh wow! Because the Raiders were 500 going, going into, into this, today, which is crazy. So the now the narrative is like the Dolphins finally beat a good team. The Chargers it's, were 0 and 0. Oh yeah, that's true. Thank Week you, Jake. One. Good point. So uh, it's yeah. hard for the Raiders to be five and five and have a loss to the Bears. Yep, that's hard to do. Yep, to be like we got to find five wins other than this one. Uh, but yeah, I I agree with you. Like the Dolphins. I'm I'm more banking on their defense coming around and starting to play really well and expecting their offense to still be like a cheat code with Tyreek Hill, who is – Tyreek Hill is out of this world. He has uh, 1,222 yards through 10 games. He's on pace for 2,077 yards, which would be a record, obviously the extra game. Uh, no one's ever had 2,000 receiving yards in the NFL in a season. He also, which is a crazy stat – he now is fourth all time in Dolphins history for 100 yard receiving games. And yeah, there's some franchises you could be like that's not that crazy, but they did have Dan Marino. Yeah. Like and so they they were throwing it around. He's fourth all time. He's play, been on the Dolphins for a season and a half. Yeah, very impressive. It's crazy. He, he's unguardable. Just purely unguardable. And if you're a Raiders fan, this is I'm going to count this as a big time moral victory. For the Raiders. Because I think Antonio Pierce might have gotten a job today. Because your defense played good enough where you can be like, we held the Dolphins to, what, 20 points? Yeah. Like, that's that's something you can hang your hat on a little bit. And if you're a fan of an NFL team that's got a, a good defense and you might be looking for a new coach, all you have to do is say, like, well, we're just a quarterback away. Yeah. So oh, we have breaking, breaking moves. moves. Oh, you're still in the hunt. You're still in the hunt. In the hunt. Let me wait. I got to get a picture of this. You're still in the hunt. That's oh, it. I missed, missed it. it. Four and seven in that the hunt. That was perfect. Four and seven in the hunt. No longer super ass. In the hunt. Okay, wait. My mom actually just updated me right now about the commanders. This is good. She said, I, I really don't know. It's like rehearsing an orchestra, and the performance sounds weak as though things don't sound rehearsed. Is it the coaches? Four question marks. She texted you at 11 p.m.? She, yeah, she knows ball. Damn. Yeah, she's right. She saw the in the hunt. She's right. She was an orchestra teacher, and she's like, yeah, it's bad coaching. Yeah. She be gets it. In the back in the hunt. So back to what you were saying about the Dolphins, like winning a game close against a bad team. Maybe the Raiders aren't a terrible, terrible team. They're not. They were a bad team. They were a bad when team. McDaniel's yeah, right. Coach. That's now they're true. not. Um, this was the first time the Dolphins won a game this year where they scored 20 points or less. So that is a sign that things are changing where they can win a game ugly yep. in a different style where they don't have to be like a front runner. And just run and shoot all over your face. They're figuring out ways to win. I think the Dolphins are like, yeah, I'm I'm close to getting them off the fraud watch. They're on the fraud watch. They're on the fraud watch, but it's for a good reason. Yep. A very I want to take them off. That's why. Uh, the Broncos are trying to drive with a minute 45 left to try to uh, win this game. I think they can do it. I, I don't think they can do it. Straw poll? I think they can win the game. I think they can win the game, and I think they can win the bet. Mm-hmm. They definitely can't win. We, I, we still need a pass interference in the end zone. Yeah, we need I a pass interference in the end zone. That's the, the only play. I wonder if the Broncos will try to kick a field goal here because that's kind of been their strategy all night is just kicking a field goal. Oh. Fumble? Yeah, it's but gotta it has got to be out of bounds, bounds, right? It's out of bounds. He didn't get it. God damn, this in the hunt graphic. Yeah. I, you heard me. I it was just, ready to move on. It just Yeah, it just teases you. I was it's ready teasing. to move on like 30 seconds ago, and now I'm right when I thought I was going to bring me back in. They got to get P. Ryan out. He just fumbled. Got to put him in the doghouse. No more snaps for him. Um, yeah, that ball was out of bounds. Uh, okay, let's take a quick break. Let's do a couple ads, and then and I agree with you too, Antonio P Pierce. He he's he should be like don't make the same mistake twice, Mark Davis. You probably don't have to pay him that much. You're already paying two coaches that you aren't that aren't coaching your football team. It's clear that the team's responding to him. 
Like they 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 were in this game. Just give them the fucking give them the job. Yeah, you don't have to do the interviews. I think maybe he likes to interview and, and take people to his favorite like, PF Changs. He likes to go out to dinner and likes to take people to the Orb, show yeah. them around Vegas a little bit. You know what, Mark uh, Davis? This, Here's what we'll do. Since you love to wine and dine people, take them to PF Changs, take them to the Orb. PFT and I will absolutely interview for the head coaching job at the Las Vegas Raiders. And if, or if he wants, we can be the the search firm. That's that's where the real money. Ernie Acorsi. I would love to be the head of a coaching search firm. Ernie Acorsi gets paid a great. million bucks, and he just is like, I'm going to call John Fox. Oh, okay, coach hired. You, you just you just look up coaches that have been fired in the last ten years. Pre- preferably your friends. You find your friends. Preferably a coach that's been fired twice in the yeah. last ten years. Like get a retread in there. You give him a list of names. You know and what? Then you, you go golfing with half of them. And then you're like, okay, well, we're just going to hire the guy you wanted to hire anyways. What you say is uh, to to the GM and the front office, the owner, you say, listen, what you guys need right now is stability. You need a guy who's done it before, not won a Super Bowl, but just been in the, the NFL for a while. You need stability. You need a professional organization. So here you go. I have found for you John Fox. Here's Jeff Fisher's number. Yeah. That's what you should do. We need we need to just we need to to calm calm the seas. We need to just be on a steady course. Stability is the most important. You don't want one of these young guns that might end up being like an incredible coach like Kyle Shanahan. What has he proved? Oh, no. Let's go with a guy we all know. Uh, you know, Hugh Jackson is out there. He went through some tough times. He knows stability. You know it'd be great if they brought back Mike Shanahan, former coach yes. of the Raiders before he got his name, yeah. He got traded away. Um that would be interesting because you could sell Mark Davis on the fact that if you want the Mike Shanahan, all the fruits of the coaching tree, like look at all the, go to the roots. coaches, yeah. you got to go to the roots and you got to get Mike in the building and then in like 10 years start hiring all of his assistants yes. to be the head coach yes. and then you'll be good. And then it will happen again. Um, all right, let's take a break. We'll do a couple ads uh, and maybe the Broncos will score and win this game. We'll, we'll talk about that after these ads. Before we get back to the games, I want to talk to you about our great friends over at Game Time. I love game time. I use game time all the time. If I'm going to a game, if I'm going to a concert, I recently bought some concert tickets. Use game time. It is the absolute best, easiest, fastest way to buy tickets and to transfer tickets. Don't worry about anything. If you're buying tickets to a big event, let game time take care of the entire process. It's so easy. They got last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. They're easy to find. You can buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. They're the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Jake, I saw that you were at a game using Game Time the other day. Yes, Heat Bowls. Shout out Game Time. We've been to a million games, a million events using Game Time, and it is the easiest way to get in. And if you have to transfer tickets, you can just text them. It's super, super simple. And they've got the all-in prices. They show you total up front so you know when you're getting a great deal without the hidden fees. You can buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with GameTime. Download the GameTime app. Create an account. Use code PMT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code PMT for $20 off. Download GameTime today. Last-minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. This episode of Part of My Take is also brought to you by Coors Light. I had some Coors Light this weekend. The mountains were blue. I was in the Blue Ridge Mountains. The mountains are super blue there. When your beer turns cold, the mountains on the bottles and the cans, they also turn blue. Fall doesn't have to be a buzzkill. Coors Light helps you find moments to unwind. If you have a big work presentation, you can follow it with a happy hour, some friends, and an ice-cold Coors Light. You got weekend chores? Take Saturday off, hit the tailgate. Even if you don't have tickets to the game, me, Max, and Memes were hit up the tailgate, enjoying some blue mountains, some Coors Light. It was delicious. Coors Light, outdoor beer, fall time, football, nothing like it. You know when it's time to chill, it's time to crack open a Coors Light. If you need to hit reset, crack open that Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment made to chill. Coors Light is the one I choose when I need to unwind. So when you hit reset, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. All right, while we were doing ads, Russell Wilson just drove the Broncos down the field for a go-ahead touchdown with Cortland Sutton. That was an incredible drive by Russ. It was a nice pass. A good, nice pass. We got good Russ back officially. Also, Javante Williams, they used him in the two-point conversion play, and it didn't work, so that makes me feel a little better. It would have been the worst if he had gotten the two-point yeah. conversion because yeah. who cares. Yeah, exactly. And you've been like, oh, that was a goal line play, but we never got to goal line. That was – Russell Wilson might be back. He's back to, I guess, the – 
the better version of Russell that we saw at the end of his Seahawks career. He's not like back back to old old Russ. You know, he's like good Russ, not great Russ. Right. But he's But good Russ with this team, obviously we're seeing right now, you can win a lot of football games with good Russ. And it's again, it's more like long term picture where this is now not a situation where you're saying to yourself, we have to eat all this money and cut him because it's untenable. Like the Broncos are going to be five and five if they can close this out because Josh Dobbs still has a minute left. So this game is far from over. But th- like you have options now. You can use your draft pick. You can do a lot of different things if you are the Broncos uh, and you want to go forward with Russ. There might be too much time for Dobbs, though. We got yeah, a minute. Three I do seconds. think there might be too much time for Dobbs. All right. Let's keep going and we'll update uh, as this goes. Uh, all right. Next up. Oh, also, Jerry just got up and walked out, probably already in his car, probably already halfway back to Arlington Heights. I like the one nice thing about Jerry, like he does it well. When he knows he's out, he's out. He's gone. He how doesn't much, linger. He just is like, I'm gone. How much money did Jerry lose tonight? Uh, Zero dollars. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Although he has, I gave him a loan uh, because fuck banks and fuck interest rates on credit, credit card charges. Uh, so I helped him get out of credit card debt. So if this had won, I was going to wipe away his loan. Okay. So he would have won. He didn't lose anything. Right. Except for the fact that he would have had his loan wiped away. Which would have been very nice. It would have been very nice for him. But we'll, we'll keep shooting. It's gambling. It, it happens. What are you going to do? It's about, it's about the stories and the friendships you make along the way. All right. Next up. Lions 31, Bears 26. So this was the perfect Bears tank game. Justin Fields back. Looked great. Used his legs, hit DJ Moore, climbed the pocket, hit DJ Moore with a dime, had 104 yards rushing. Uh, the Bears controlled this game. Their defense was buzzing, turned over Jared Goff three times, another turnover on a uh, a fumble. And then we got down to uh, the last two minutes, and the Bears went to full tank offense where they just ran the ball up the middle twice and then took a deep shot that had no chance of uh, being converted. I want to... St- it would be nice for Justin Fields to win a couple games, but in terms of big picture, this was a perfect game because he looked good, the Bears competed, and Matt Eberflus is 100% not the coach and should be fired. He loses every game like this. He is a complete coward of a coach, and their draft position stays intact, and I can live with it. This is the same conversation we were having last year, though, too. I know, you know, but like, no, I know. Well, this, that's this, what's the common loss, denominator. It's good. Matt Eberflus is yeah. a bad coach. It's it's good that at least at this point we know that Matt Eberflus is not going to be around next year. There were rumors that he was maybe going to save his job because the defense has been playing a lot better. That needs to just be snuffed out. Like he's a loser of a coach. He yeah. coaches games to lose. So this was the first time in NFL history, yes, that a team had a plus three turnover margin, forty minutes time of possession. And lost. Yes. It had never happened going back to 1932. Teams were 48 and 0 until the Bears did that today. And so remember, this is this is his masterpiece. This is his masterpiece. And remember, this is also uh there was the Bears had earlier this year uh a game where it was split time of possession 30 30, but a plus five turnover margin against the Saints and lost that game. Matt Eberflus is a loser of a head coach. He needs to be gone. I agree with you, though. It is like kind of deja vu where it's like, are the Bears just going to stick in this land of uh, just like every time they lose, I'm like, it's okay. Draft picks. I don't I don't really have an answer to that question. It does feel like I'm in Groundhog's Day. And maybe I'm foolish to think that next year will be us breaking ground, Groundhog's Day. But I guess that's what happens when you're Groundhog's Day. You think the next day you wake up, you're not going to be there anymore. So I'm just telling myself next year when we get to week one, we won't be there anymore. But, yeah, we could be sitting here at this exact point next year and I'm having the exact same conversation with you, and you're going to be like, are you okay? Are you okay? What do you think people called it before the movie Groundhog's Day came out? I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. I think they just, like, invented a, a new word for it, or a, new, a new explanation for it. But, yeah, it is the same conversation we had last year. But it's also, like, completely logical on your end to say – it's good for the team if we get a better draft pick. Well, it's good for the team if the defense plays well. It's good for the team if Justin Fields looks competitive. These are all bonuses. Th- those are all exactly what you're looking for. But a win accomplishes nothing. Don't. Yeah, the, the, I, I'd say the biggest thing is you have to maybe win a game in September. Or yeah, winning I, games in September might might break you from uh, this cycle where you're like, 
you know, so quickly saying draft pick. It would also help if you won a divisional game. Yeah, because we I don't think, win those. I think since Eberflus said, was it him or Poles that said, we're going to take the division, we're not going to give it back. No, um, he doesn't win them. Matt Eberflus has not won a divisional game. No. Since and he's been head coach. And he's like leading in all of them. Yeah. He, they, they, and guess what? We're playing the Vikings on Monday night. It'll probably be the same thing where it's like they look good for a few quarters mm -hmm. and they go into turtle mode. Uh, if yeah, you're, if you're whatever. Gonna, I'm in Groundhog's Day. It's fine. I'll, I'll be fine. Two picks. I'm fine. That is actually the right response after this game. Yeah. It, do, it does sound like loser talk, but guess what? When you lose, you might as well get some advantage afterwards. This is like the most productive loss that you can possibly have. Right. Your coach is one step closer to being fired, and you do get a better draft pick out of it. So it makes sense to spin it this way. I would definitely spin it that way if I were it, you. It, I had a, another moment uh, the other day where it just like clicked on me because um, our good friend Kyle Long, he wasn't able to – he didn't have his credit card, so he couldn't stay in the hotel it, when he came to Chicago, came to the office. So he stayed in my house. And when my son woke up and walked down the stairs, there's this behemoth of a man standing at the bottom of the stairs. He's like, what the hell? Um, and I was like, this is my friend Kyle. He played for the Bears. And he immediately said, he's like, when the Bears lose, they actually win. And Kyle looked at me and he's like, really? And I was like, yeah, dude. Like, mm -hmm. you know. You, you know how it works here. Listen, he might he's going to be in for a life of pain. You got to get <laughs> yeah. started early on the yeah. spin zones. When losses are wins, you win a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You almost never lose actually. Yeah. Uh, uh, as, as for the Lions. Yeah, I was going to say if you're a Detroit fan, um you probably had your diaper on today. This is a full diaper game. I'm going to give this two diapers on a scale of uh of 0 to two and a half diapers. It was bad. It was bad for the most part of the game and then you ended up winning, so you got to be happy about that. And the the thing is Jamison Williams I think makes like a big difference now that he's like getting oh, yeah. into the flow of the offense. He is so fucking fast. It's crazy. That so Jared was not good today for the first uh fifty six minutes of the game. He kind of looked lost. He was turning the ball over. He was he was he was rushed in the pocket. Then when they came to winning time, he had they were down twelve with four fifteen left. He drove them down for a touchdown in a minute and 16, which is like really the only way you can come back from down 12 is you have to do it very fast. That dime he threw to Jamison Williams was incredible. And then the last drive, he did the same thing where he just perfectly diced up the Bears, moved the ball down the field for the game-winning touchdown. Also, shout out Darnell Wright, uh, my MVP of the week. That was great. For great kicking play. the ball out of the end zone and not having the spread get in jeopardy. Um, so yeah, it Hutchinson was, was about to recover that for a touchdown. Yeah, no that, doubt about it. But that the Lions are flirting with stuff right now. I don't know. You know what though? You could also say the Lions are learning how to win. It's a, in true Michigan form. They're battling through a whole bunch of adversity that they created for themselves. Okay, so I think this Lions team, this offense is very, very good. I have concerns about the defense. Uh, Lions fans probably would agree with this statement. It does feel at times when you look at their season thus far, can't apologize for being seven and three. Maybe a lot of weight put it on that first uh, week one win against the Chiefs. Yeah, when they didn't have Kelsey, they have to. They they they're gonna have a game coming up. Uh, let me look at their schedule real quick. Where they're gonna have to beat. Or sorry, they're eight and two. I'm. I, I apologize. People are gonna. I'm definitely gonna get some tweets right there. Now you've caught up. They're eight and two. I apologize. Uh, they have a game against the Cowboys, second to last week of the season. That will be a big one. How sick is it, though, if you're a Lions fan, that you get to enjoy this Thanksgiving game? Yeah. It's, that's awesome. No, look, they're going to go to the playoffs, and I do think they can win playoff games. I just – their defense does make people nervous. The, the Bears were able to move the ball very well on them. Yeah. They had, like, 25, for, uh, they had 25 first downs. That's a lot of first downs. That's a ton of first downs. I don't think we had 25 first downs. I Either way, Lions fans know where they stand. They're like, this season is awesome. You're building something awesome. Now that you are officially a good team at eight and two, the like levels start to change where it's like, all right, you're eight and two. It's no longer the plucky underdog Lions. You're eight and two. You have a stranglehold now on the NFC North because the Vikings just lost. You have to figure out, you know, can can you win playoff games? Mm -hmm. That's the next step in this whole thing. They had twenty five first downs. So this is Bears a, had 25 first down. Here's another crazy stat here. Down by more than 10 points, or I guess 10 points or more with less than five minutes ago, teams were 0 and 84, make that 1 and 84 per the CBS post game show. Whoa. I guess that's this season. It sounds like that's probably from this season. Um, but that's that's crazy. If you're a Lions fan, like your team doesn't give up. And in the post game, Dan Campbell was about to cry, talking to Aiden Hutchinson. 
It, it just looks like a team that's very easy to root for. And here's another fun stat here, okay? There's four teams that have never made a Super Bowl. It's the Lions, the Browns, the Jaguars, and the Texans. The Lions have not had a better start since 1954 than they have this year. The Browns have not had a better start since 1994. The Jaguars have not had a better start since 1999. And the Texans have not had a better start since 2018. Not that, not as impressive yeah, yeah. with the Texans. But those first three. But, but the first three. Awesome. I mean, especially the Lions. You have not been 8-2 since 1954. The Lions and the Browns are good. Yeah. They're good football teams. And they're going to be in the playoffs. And, like, I'm excited for that. That's the, the fan bases. Those two fan bases deserve to have some type of happiness and have like be able to wake up on Sundays and be like, I'm excited to watch my football team play. Those are the little joys that make it all worth it. You, have to, you wake up and you're like, I'm excited to watch this game. If you have, if you live in a super cold climate like Detroit, I guess Cleveland is probably pretty bad weather too. You get a lot of that lake effect snow. Uh, if you live in a place like that in the wintertime, you have to have one sports team that you're excited about. Yeah. You have to. That's the only way that you can get through those types of winters. And the Lions fans are going to be, like, super excited, at least through January. Because the team, they've got the best offense in the NFL. They have the yeah. number one offense. The Detroit Lions have the best offense. And it's not a fluke. And with Jamison Williams back, it's always good to have a guy that, at, at the end of the day, you can just be like, go run past everyone. Yeah. And we'll just throw it downfield. And Jameer Gibbs, like, they have so many weapons. David Montgomery runs so hard. And that, their, their offensive line is getting healthy, too. That was perfect that David Montgomery scored the game-winning touchdown. Yeah. Let him walk for nothing. Yep. For nothing. Uh, all right, wait. So the game just ended. The Broncos won. We got to talk about the Broncos real quick. The Broncos might be good. They're in the hunt. Like, this is three wins in a row. Or, sorry, four wins in a row. Two of them coming against the Bills and the Chiefs and a really red-hot Vikings team. Next week's going to be awesome. They're playing the Browns. So if Like, that's going to be a huge – whoever wins that game is – I the Broncos still have a lot of work to do to get back in the playoff picture – uh, or like to get firm in the playoff picture, but the Broncos might be good. I, I'm I'm happy for Russ. I know that we are part of the problem uh, in terms of everyone making fun of Russ, but again, that's the that's the American dream. Just tear someone down, then build them back up. I mean, I'm going to continue to make fun of Russell Wilson. Oh, for it sure. It gives me so much joy to do that. And it, if Russell Wilson has a problem with it, then he's actually the hater for making me not have as much fun making fun of him. Dude, the AFC is so loaded, it's crazy. Like... If Joe Burrow didn't get hurt, there's 11 teams that all could have. I mean, the Colts are sitting in the in the ninth spot right now. It's nuts how good the AFC is. The Chargers are the 13th seat. We'll get to the Chargers. They're the 13th seat. Actually, their next game up. They stink. All right, let's talk about it. I'm, I'm happy I'm, for Broncos fans though. Your season is completely salvaged, and like Sean Payton, uh, Better coach than Nathaniel Hackett. I would say that that if the season had started four weeks ago, we'd be talking about the Broncos as being one of the best teams in the entire yeah, NFL. Four zero in the last four. Yeah, they they are playing good enough to be like, well, they've beaten some good teams. We think um, they are like amongst the elite class of the AFC. But unfortunately for them, the first month and a half of the season happened. Jake, next time we have an NFL player on the show, yep. I would like to remind me to ask him this question because I think that there's a, maybe some truth in this theory of mine. When you get when your team is bad and you're getting closer to the trade deadline and there are all these rumors that you're selling everyone and you're basically like punting on the whole season to then get past the trade deadline and be like here's who we have let's go win some football games that has to be a galvanizing effect like yeah. because that is directly correlated to where the Broncos started playing good football cuz they were that team that they were like everyone's on the table come ask for it we'll trade anyone and then having having no big trades happen and then being like, all right, guys, it's us now. Like, they didn't completely dismantle this franchise. Let's go win some football games. And, and true to the Sean Payton method of just negging all your players, uh, he probably came back to him and said to a certain select group of them, like, nobody – we tried to trade some of you. Nobody wanted you guys. So we're just going to roll the dice with the people that we have. He probably just negged them that much. Where now they're like, okay, we're on a fuck everybody mission – Let's at least put some good tape out there for, for next season. Or maybe he does have him bought in. I, I It seems like he's doing a much better job with the guys. That maybe it was good for them to get their ass kicked like they did and get embarrassed by the Dolphins. Yes. Maybe that, that might have been a moment. I would like to look that up, see like the teams that have ever gotten like 60 points dropped on them, what they do from that point until the rest of the season. If that happened towards the end of the season, like if that happened in late November, early December, 
I feel like the Broncos just fold up and they give up on everything. Yeah. But it happened early enough where they're like, fuck, well, I don't have to deal with I don't have to deal with three more months of this. Right. I better figure something out. I better do everything that I can just yeah. that my life isn't completely miserable until February. Yes. Um, all right. Next game. The Packers twenty three, Chargers twenty. Uh, let's talk about the Packers real quick, and then I, we have a lot to talk about with the Chargers. This is going to hurt me to say, but that was, if you're a Packers fan, that was like the win you've been waiting for where a lot of the young guys start to contribute. Uh, Jaden Reed, Romeo Dobbs, Jordan Love. That, like, this entire Packers season has been weird because they essentially said, we're going to have Jordan Love start. He's our franchise quarterback. And also, we're going to give him all young weapons around him and hope they can all figure it out together. And today, they played well together, and you finally feel like you're going in the right direction, which hurts me. But I have to at least give them credit. If you're a Packers fan, that was the type of win. You're like, okay, even though this season has been bad and they're not going to go to the playoffs, you see those little games where you're like, oh, shit, we have talent, and it will take a little bit of time to come along, but that talent is there. Are we past the point where we can say that the uh, the Chargers are even like overrated? No, they I, suck. I think they just suck now. Like I don't expect more from the Chargers than what they're showing me. They, I think this was Jordan Love's first three hundred yard passing game. Yeah, it was the first time the Packers had a three hundred yard passing game in like twenty twenty two games or something. It's been a long time. And uh, you can stop asking Brandon Staley if he's going to stop calling the, the plays on defense because he snapped at a reporter. We had yeah, we had Coach Snap alert. Uh, in the post game, where he was like, "Stop asking! I'm going to stop you right now. Don't ask me that question anymore. I'm going to call the plays." I think I think he's probably candidate number one for in season firing. Yeah, he. It feels like it's happening soon. Um, more concerning for the Chargers than Brandon Staley snapping, which, like, of course he's going to snap because he is a defensive coach and his defense fucking sucks. Uh, is Justin Herbert? He is showing early onset rivers. Uh, he had a moment where he like threw the ball down after it was either a delay a game or something, and like stomped, mm -hmm. and it was almost exactly like rivers had thrown a little temper tantrum. And I do not blame him whatsoever. If you didn't watch this game, and you want to be one of those Justin Herbert sucks guys, go for it. Justin Herbert got completely let down by his entire team. Uh, Keenan Allen dropped. Uh, literally a ball in his chest for a touchdown. Quentin Johnson dropped a ball that was a perfect throw to get them in field goal range uh, when they were down 23-20. If not a touchdown. Austin Eckler fumbled at the two-yard line. Like, Justin Herbert is not the problem. Everyone, everyone else is the problem. And I know that probably sounds crazy, but, like, it is the truth when you watch these games and you're like, how can everyone let this guy down so routinely? And then he gets to a point where he's showing early onset rivers. And I'm worried about that because that, that one little temper tantrum, like, oh my God, I've seen this before in this Chargers uniform. He's just frustrated at everyone on his team. So he is uh, going into today, he was 29 and 29 as a starter, perfectly even. The Chargers were 482 and 482 and 11 all time going into today. It is, it is early onset rivers. It's yeah. streams. And yeah. he where had, he, so since his first start, they had scored 1,502 points. You know how many points they had allowed since Herbert's first start? 1,502 points. They were like the very definition of 50-50. So now, um, now they've given up three more points than they've scored, and they're 482 and 483 and 11 all time. Herbert is now 29 and 30 as a start. That actually feels better. Like he, If you had told me 29 and 30, I'd say you're exactly right. Like yeah. that, they're, they're a very average team. But we'll all always like find a way to just disappoint you at the very end, um, and we'll this, always flash to a point where you're like, "Ooh, watch out for the Chargers." Yeah, but now, now that's what I'm saying. I I don't think you can say that the Chargers are underachieving anymore. No, I think the Chargers are just the Chargers. They're yeah, just the c words. This was I like I went in this game and I my entire analysis. I think we talked about it on Friday. It was like the Chargers shouldn't be three point favorites on the road to anyone because the Chargers will always find a way to make the game close and and figure out a way to lose close when they should win, and they should have won this game if you don't have all these drops, fumbles, and everything. The Chargers have six losses this year. Five of those losses are by three points or less. Yeah, I, I would say crazy. the Chargers should always be 
two and a half point underdogs to everybody. Yeah. No matter who it is. And it, it'll probably end up 50 50 on either side. They always do that. Uh, someone, someone will make the graphic, which I love. Where it's like, if you flip all the one possession games, what would your record be? I yeah. feel like every year, if you flip all the one possession games for the Chargers, they would be the best team in the league. Yeah. They are like the uh, bizarro world, upside down world of last year's Vikings, where they are in one score games and they always lose them. Or the Steelers. Yeah. The Steelers this year. Uh, yeah, the, the Chargers stink. They just, what a, what a, I, I feel bad for Chargers fans. I I actually had a bunch of them reach out to me last week. It was the Lambo because effect, like there said. there are a few people yeah. that went to the cathedral, went to Lambo, checking a game, um, and I guess Chargers fans probably travel pretty well. It also what, what you didn't realize, I didn't realize it either. Um, the Packers do two. It's like the gold package they call it. Two games a year where they uh, sell a bunch of tickets because it takes forever to be on the Packers season ticket list. So they sell a bunch of tickets to people who are on the list. Uh, like in the Milwaukee area, and basically, like it, it happened with the Thursday night game against the Lions, and all those people just sell the tickets for a shitload of money. Yeah, and so the the gold package games are the games where like a bunch of opposing fans can get tickets. Yeah, well, yeah. Congrats if you're a Chargers fan that that went to this game. I hope you had a good time at the Cathedral. Uh, I, I I do apologize for saying that they weren't going to travel to this one. You're right. Like Lambo is a destination. Yeah, it's it, it, you it, want to take in a little bit of history. It's Chargers Panthers. Yeah. Is the least travel to game. I would imagine. Or even Panthers, Chargers. Yeah. Uh, Chargers, Falcons, probably. Yeah. Right up there, like, take your pick of any NFC South team besides the Saints. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, you wouldn't, no one's like, I want to spend a whole weekend. No offense to Charlotte. It's actually a beautiful city, but it's not, the stadium isn't anything. Yeah. I mean, special. they moved the Bahamas Bowl to Charlotte. Yeah. That's how impressive That's it is. That's how beautiful it's a it great, is. Great, great wintertime city. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They moved the Maui to Asheville. So North it, Carolina gets it all. That's right. Uh, okay, next game, Cowboys 33, Panthers 10. I don't know. Cowboys deserve credit for, like, beating the shit out of the Panthers. They do. Yeah. I'll give them credit. So, uh, per Jay Glazer, front of the program, Frank Reich's seat is hot, and it is, in fact, the hottest in the NFL. I would say, I would put Staley's seat, it should be hotter than Frank Reich's seat. But when you add in the David Tepper effect. I was going to say, the Chargers are cheap. The Panthers, David Tepper, it feels like he will fire everyone, even if he has to pay them to go away. I would love to see how many, how many like one and done coaches they can do in perpetuity. Like keep, keep this thing moving. Let's just get one coach per year until you strike gold. It's uh, it's not a good time to be a Panthers fan. You're probably bummed out about a lot of things. Uh, but on the other side, the Cowboys did what the Cowboys do, and they beat bad teams, and they beat them soundly. And Dax the, playing well, though. Dax like, playing well. You have well. to say, Dax playing well. He, he, remember the famous quote? He's like, You won't see 10 interceptions out of me. He's only at six. Mm -hmm. You got to give Dak credit. Yeah. And give credit to Jimmy Johnson for being uh, the most patient person in show business for the last like 30 years. He got, it, he had a little pregame meeting with Jerry Jones, who said, We're going to put you into the ring of honor this year. We should have done this a long time ago. Um, and then he said, we're actually going to induct you in, uh, I think, like December 30th of 1923. Hmm. And then Jimmy was like, wait, do you mean 2023? Jerry was like, yeah, absolutely. I got my decades. Mm -hmm. I got my centuries confused. Um, so credit to Jimmy Johnson. He was a great coach. And they talked about how he was not invited to be because of personal off-the-field issues that he had with Jimmy or yeah. with uh, Jerry. Yeah. So the two, if I can change and you can change and we all can change, it, a long national nightmare is over. Jimmy Johnson will be getting into the ring of honor. It is funny that Jerry Jones had, I guess you count Bill Parcells as well in this category, but so he had one coach that would push back on him and he had all the success. Yeah. And maybe there was something. A Barry Switzer. Maybe there's something to be said for that. Like maybe you want a guy who will say, hey, Jimmy or Jerry, no. Yeah. And like, I'm the boss. You're not the boss. Just a thought. I just love the idea that Jerry Jones still, he grinds <laughs> tape. Yeah, like Jerry Jones is at home right now, probably with like three fingers of Johnny Walker Blue. He's smelling his shoes and he's watching like Arkansas game tape. Trying yeah, to figure out which offensive lineman to take two rounds too high. He's I their respect entire him. draft team. Yeah, I respect their scout team. I respect the hell out of it because he does actually. It's not like Tepper who just kind of parachutes in and says, "I want this guy, I want that guy." Jerry Jones actually grinds tape. Yes, uh, Bryce Young. I have two more points in this game. Bryce Young threw another pick six to Deron Bland, who has his fourth pick six of the year. Uh, also, Deron Bland. He has started 22 regular season games. He has 11 interceptions. The dude is literally averaging a half an interception a game. He's a fifth-round pick. That's insane. He has more touchdowns than Devontae Adams. It's crazy. He's been out of this world good. Uh, my last point, and I want 
to know what you think of this theory. I think the Cowboys are actually in a perfect spot for the Cowboys right now because there isn't that much hype with them right now because they have had a couple tests that they failed, the 49ers, the Eagles. Like, they might just be able to kind of stay a little bit under the radar because they're a very good football team. I don't think anyone would say they're not a very good football team, but they're not talked about, you know, when it's peak Cowboys hype. Like, if they had beaten the 49ers or beaten the Eagles, they would be leading first take every single day. They would be talked about like they are Super Bowl favorites, all this stuff. They might be doing a good job of staying right underneath the fray where they could sneak some teams. So here's what's going to happen. If if the Eagles lose to the Chiefs on Monday Night Football and the Cowboys beat the Commanders, which they probably will on Thanksgiving, then we're going to get all the takes of yes. Super Bowl Cowboys. Yeah. And we're going to find out a lot about the team because they've got a very hard schedule coming up in just a little bit. They're going to have to play some very good teams to the point where I could see them I could see them going on a big losing streak throughout the end of November and through December. It's a possibility because their schedule is very, very hard. Counterpoint, they if they like win fifty percent, sixty percent of those games, then we will be talking about the Cowboys as being like going into the playoffs. They should make some noise. They yeah. should make it to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm just I, I was thinking about it because I, I do think the Cowboys are a very good team. Um, but they're kind of in that perfect spot because when you talk about the NFC, it's always Eagles 49ers. Yeah. And they're, they're distant third in those conversations. That might be where the Cowboys need to be. I'm, I'm concerned about Micah Parsons. He needs to step his weight up a little bit. He had his scoop of C4 before the game Yes, and said that it affected him too hard. You can get on some pre-workout, man. Yeah. He One scoop up. of C4, not that much. Actually the perfect pre-workout exercise. Yeah. It's probably why you're able to run everywhere. So yep. stay on the stay on the protocol. Uh, all right, last of the early games: Jaguars thirty four, Titans fourteen. Trevor Lawrence back. Yeah, so we should have actually sniffed this out when Doug Peterson, when your head coach, after a couple weeks of you being injured, comes out and says something about how limited you are. Yeah, that's probably a good sign that you're no longer limited. Yeah, so we should get Florio to investigate like a grand jury on that and see what they can turn up about the injury report. I can't wait to talk to Florio. <laughs> yeah, he's got so much he's, fan fiction. He also was texting me because he. He wants to know if Dave's class action lawsuit that he's putting uh, against the NFL, Dave Portnoy, our boss, uh, has started a class action lawsuit against the Bengals. He's like, is this for real? Mm -hmm. I want in. Totally. totally. I want in. Mike will, Mike will be a dogged, dogged lawyer for you. Yes. Uh, um, yeah. I, I, I'm just going to talk to him. I'm going to make him talk about Bill Belichick the entire time just so that Hank has to listen to it. Hank, where are you at with Bill Belichick? Same as it ever was. Your coach. Yeah. Yeah. Big game against Tommy DeVito coming up. Must lose. That actually was good. Oh, you want to lose? Yeah. You're fully tank. There's, there's winning does nothing. You're gonna win that game though. Probably because Tommy DeVito coming off of uh, the pinnacle of his life. Yeah, I can't imagine he's hard to game plan. No, you can figure him out. I think a competent defensive coach would be able to figure him out pretty easily. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He's not hard to game plan. Yeah. yeah. Jack Del Rio couldn't do it. Now, I, I was I was doing my radio hit that I do every Friday on 106.7 The Fan in D.C., and they asked me about the Bill Belichick thing. And I realized just like how, how much being on this show has really fucked up my entire perception because I completely recognize the fact that Bill Belichick I don't think is a great head coach anymore, but I would be willing to tolerate him on my team and just enduring more and more losing and passing up maybe good, successful – promising young head coaches just for the fact that it would troll Hank. That's that's how much I like that. this show has fucked me up. But it's also, it would be very, very funny. So I am kind of hoping for that still. I mean, what young coach would you take over Bill Belichick? That's that's a crazy statement. There's young that coaches out there. That was the most backhanded compliment lie cap statement you've ever made. I mean, you're done with cap. Belichick. No, but I'm saying, you're like, oh, I don't know if, you know, I would do it as a troll. No, you you would do yeah. it for anything. You would do it over anyone. No, I would name I, a young coach who okay, you'd rather have. Okay, than Bill okay from like a pure football standpoint, right now, I would probably want Ben Johnson as a head coach. That's a lie. Why? What has Belichick done in the last couple of years? He made it to the playoffs with Mac Jones. That's true. That's a that's a valid point. Also, you, Hank could reverse it and be like, he hasn't had a franchise quarterback, but Washington does. Yeah, I, you? I don't know if I want Sam Howell to take a step back in terms of the coaching that he's getting though, because right now he's got Rivera. As you brought up so astutely a couple weeks ago, Belichick might not be able to talk to him the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you want Bill Belichick that like that was that no, was just really, that was an unnecessary. No, I just want him just, just to full fuck of with shit you. statement. Like, no, I'm no, I'm I'm being honest with you. I want him just to fuck with you. 
No, you just want him. It's okay. You can admit it. I want him to fuck with you. you want, just, yeah, no, you can you admit want him. you want him. I don't want him. I do, I want, I do want, want him. him. I do want him. All right, set and so. But the there reason... The reasoning behind it is just so that I can. No, there can be two reasons. Yeah, yeah. There no, are okay. Deep th- down, you want yeah. him because you think he's Come a good on. coach. There yeah. are two reasons. Ben Johnson. Yeah, it's okay yeah. to. Your admit. Your number one reason could be Hank. But it's okay yeah. to also... admit that he's a yeah. good coach. I don't know. I don't know if he's a great coach anymore. He's better than what you have now. Yes. Better oh, than Ben yeah. fucking Johnson. He's better than any other yeah. option out there. Agreed, Jake. Who is Ben Johnson? O O C for the Lions. Best offense of the league. Uh we should talk about the Jaguars Titans. Trevor Lawrence is back. He scored. He had four touchdowns today. Wow. He's actually uh, three times in his career had four total touchdowns. He had two passing, two running. Two out of those three have come against the Titans. Yeah. The, so we got to remind ourselves that he owns the Titans. The Titans do not look good. No, they're they, they are ass. They look close to the Q word. Quit. Yeah, their offensive line is bad. I feel bad for Will Levis. It's like, yeah, they're bad. That it felt like he was running for his life the entire game. Yeah, it, at least if you're a Titans fan, you have you still have the thought in your head like Will Levis can be very very good. He might be the guy. Yeah, and it's they're smart to have him be playing instead of Ryan Tannehill because Ryan Tannehill probably is better than him right now. But you got to figure it out right now. Yeah, but besides that, there's not not a whole lot to look forward to if you're a Titans fan for the for the remainder of the season. No, you guys stink. It's a fact. And the Jaguars scheduled win. Prisco scheduled win. Mm-hmm. That Texans game is going to be great. I'm very excited for it. That will be a huge, huge game for the uh, AFC South. Uh, okay. Let's take our last break, and then we'll do the afternoon games. Before we get to the rest of the games, they're brought to you by our good friends over at Zbiotics. I had Zbiotics yesterday, actually. Zbiotics, I've been a customer of Zbiotics for the last five years, four years, and now they started sponsoring the podcast. It's great. If there's a surefire way to wake up feeling fresh after a night of drinking, it's with Zbiotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic. Zbiotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic drink is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember to make Zbiotics pre-alcohol your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly, and you'll feel your best tomorrow. I had a couple, uh, couple cold blue mountains yesterday when I was in Harrisonburg. Before I started that, I had some Zbiotics. I woke up feeling super refreshed, felt great, and it's all because of Zbiotic. This holiday season, give your friends and family a gift that they will actually want and use the Zbiotics. Go to zbiotics.com/pmt and get 15% off your first order when you use PMT at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee, so if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they're going to refund your money. No questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash PMT. Use code PMT at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode, and thank you for sponsoring our good times. This episode of Part of My Take is also brought to you by Babbel. This fall, you can start speaking a new language with Babbel. Why Babbel? Because it works. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor, or fooling yourself with language apps that are little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real-life situations, and delivered with conversation-based teaching. Babbel's personalized learning content Real-time feedback, tracking, and visualizations help keep you focused and motivated. That's why 15 hours with Babbel is equal to one university semester. Babbel's wide range of learning experiences ranging from casual to intense mean there's always a way to fit in a Babbel session. From self-study app lessons to podcasts to live classes, with over 10 million subscriptions sold, Babbel is real language learning for real conversations. Here's a special limited-time deal for our listeners. Get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash PMT. That's 55% off at babbel, that's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash PMT. Rules and restrictions may apply. All right, afternoon games, 49ers, 27, Bucks, 14, Brock Purdy back to being elite. That Brock Purdy was so good today. Also. So, so good today. He was he was dropping dimes at 74-yarder to Ayuk, was just like an outstanding throw. 
He's the first 49ers quarterback with minimum of 20 attempts to have a perfect passer rating of 158.3. 49ers have had some pretty good quarterbacks over the course of their history. He's the first one to do that, and that was just a stark reminder to me that I don't know what the fuck goes into a quarterback rating. Yeah. 158.3 is the best that you can do. I don't know how they come up with that. It's so I, stupid. I, I don't know the math. I don't know who decided to make it that as being the very maximum. Does anything – I think they just said – we want to invent a system where uh, a good performance, one that looks good, is just over 100. That way, you know, if you're over 100, it was a good day. Yes. If you're beneath 100, it was a bad day. But I, I have no idea the type of calculus that has to go into calculating that. Yeah. It's the dumbest rating of all time. We should have asked Fitzy. I'm sure Fitzy could have explained it to No, him. I don't even think he knows. No one That's knows. That's how stupid it is. Uh, I'm Brand working on it. Brandon Ayuk. He deserves more credit for being an incredible wide receiver. He doesn't get talked about in that like wide receiver one uh, conversation because he there's so much talent around him. Uh, but he is awesome, awesome. Yep. I'm also just happy that the Bucks like this would have fucked me up if the 49ers had lost to the Bucks. I needed this to happen just so it's like I do kind of know football. You know, like this, the, the 49ers are way better than the Bucks. They matched up well against the Bucks. Yeah. I just needed that so that I I could feel that. Uh George Kittle did a double dab today. He actually sent it to me. I need to see it. He uh, he scored a touchdown. Double dab. Oh, that was nice. Both hands. No both, chicken? Both arms. No, no chicken. Double dab. That's nice. Double dab. Kittle's so fucking good. I feel bad He's for I feel bad for Hufanga out for the season. That sucks. He's one of the best players on, on the 49ers defense. That's... That's going to be tough to swallow if you're a Niners fan. But still, everything looks like you're on the right track right now. Like this was this was a must dominate game for the 49ers. So they they finished the mission today. It was uh, it was a statement win for them. I'm still all in on that on that team. Yeah, I'm all in on that team. And the Bucks just like they're they just stay in the. Someone's got to win the NFC South. Maybe the Bucks. It could be the Bucks. It wouldn't be the craziest thing if the Bucks won. Who cares? It could I, be anybody except for the Panthers. They should just. There really should be a rule that if you're not over 500 and you win the division, you don't get a home playoff game. Yeah, and at least in the NFC, the South division makes sense. In the AFC, the Colts being in the South really fucks me up. Yeah. Really screws me up. Yeah. Um, okay. Rams, Seahawks. Rams. Rams. My pick on Friday. I, I said I was going to buy back in on the Rams, even though uh, I said they sucked a couple weeks ago. Matt Stafford gamer like throwing dimes in the second half he was bad in the first half the rams offense was atrocious do you see the hit that he took yeah he got actually folded in half yeah when he threw that interception he's, he is he's top three toughest dudes he's very tough he's yeah. very very tough uh but yeah he was he was lights out at the end of the game cooper cup got hurt and he was still throwing dimes all over the field um the seahawks drew lock that was something he came in because Gino hurt his shoulder, I believe. Elbow. Elbow. But he came back in. He came end. back in because that's how bad Drew Locke is, that Gino was hurt, and he's like, well, I still am a better option. Drew Locke came in. He was two for six for three yards in an interception that cost him the game. Did you see the, the play that he got injured on? It looked, like, it looked like Aaron Donald hit him like he was driving a car <laughs> that ran over Gino Smith, just wrecked him. And then uh, Drew Locke, he is the moxie king of the NFL. Nobody loves Drew Locke as much as Drew Locke does. Well, maybe I, I, I do love Drew Locke. Yeah. I, every time he comes into a game, I think back. Maybe my worst take that I've ever had on this show, that Drew Locke will be a five-time Pro Bowler just because I liked him on the sidelines. Rap, who is he rapping to? Jeezy? I don't know. Hank? I think so. Jeezy. Yeah. Think yeah. Jeezy. Put it all for my city. Yeah, so ever since I saw that, I was like, yeah, this guy, Drew Locke, he has it. I don't, I can't define it, but he's got it. And uh, I've, I continue to be proven wrong by that. But every time he gets it, I'm like, maybe, maybe Drew Locke. We don't know. Um, we need to also always remember the uh, NFC West coaching circle. We always forget it every year. McVay dominates Carroll. Hmm. Carroll dominates Shanahan. Shanahan dominates McVay. Everybody dominates the Cardinals. Yeah. And I, that, that's why I took the Rams today. They, they, they swept the Seahawks this year. Yep. And now the Rams, I don't think, like, we go back to someone's got to get that seventh seed in the NFC, and I know it was the Vikings for a minute there because they were playing really well, and if they had won this game tonight, they would have been, like, 
in a stranglehold for the seven seed, and they still are two games up or whatever it is. They're six and five. But the Rams, if they put together a couple wins, I think they have the Cardinals next. They could maybe flirt with it. I just need them. To I, get, I still my money's on the on the Vikings. I just need I need them to get over seven and a half wins. Then I'll be happy. Yeah, yeah. This is a big step. This is a big step. Uh, okay. Last game memes. Yes, sir. Bills thirty two, Jets six. This was quite something. Memes. This sucked. Even knowing how shitty Zach Wilson is, um. You really, it, it's as low as low could be. We we put on this game. We had memes and uh, our colleague Tom Lay sit front and center. Hank also bet on the Jets' money line. And we flipped to the game, and it was flipped to the game. Not one second later, Jets fumbling the open kickoff. And it was just, that was the sign of how bad this game was going to be. Zach Wilson got benched for Tim Boyle. Zach Wilson, there was a clip of him going back out on the field, jogging backwards, and he fell. He fell down. Zach Wilson ran over his head coach. Zach Wilson did everything today to make everyone be like, why is Zach Wilson still playing quarterback for the New York Jets? I actually saw the sideline thing a little bit differently. I thought that Salah saw his shot to injure Zach Wilson and threw him down a little bit hard. He put some stank on Gave that Gave him a tackle. little bit of extra. He, he wrapped him up, and he threw him down on the ground. I think if Zach Wilson had gotten up and, like, his thumbs dislocated, Salah would have been like, yes, okay, great. Now now I get to make the decision I've wanted to make for a while, and let's move on. He said after the game, I don't know who we're starting as a quarterback next week. My guess is it's probably not the guy that he tried to injure. Um, I think it's time now, Memes. We can say Zach Wilson, his ceiling is not Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't even think his ceiling's like Josh Dobbs. He, he, it's just bad right now. No, Josh Dobbs is really good. Yeah, Chad Kelly's out there. Chad he Kelly. is. Chad Kelly, Hi, what do you like? It's over. Uh, oh, I, before I I have people jumping down my throat uh, on Friday. Remember, I did say at the time I thought the Jets could beat the Dolphins. That time is no longer. The Jets cannot beat the Dolphins. Yeah, that time has passed. That, that time is very might, much we passed. We might lose that game by 50. That that The Jets are so fucking bad. And you can tell, too, what's unfortunately happened with you guys is Zach Wilson, he's infested, infected the defense where it's like, what are we doing? Why are we even playing? Yeah, the, de- the defense has quit. The whole team's quit. It's just not fun right now. There was a weird report that came out right before the game that the Jets are going to target Devontae Adams in free agency, which is probably not the leak that you put out if your team is trying to win this year. You're just like letting people know, hey, just hang on with us because we're going to try to get better next season. Just please bear with us. So now are we officially – we're officially like not wanting Aaron Rodgers to come back No, he year? can't come back. I, I could see him being like, all right, I come back beginning of December. Now we run the table. Aaron Rodgers did that last year. He was like, what? we run the no, table now. No, no, no. Have what? you seen? Have you seen? He's crazy. Have what you seen you his saying? offensive line, though? I know, but Aaron Rodgers, what, he has like two, three seasons left, maybe? Okay, but if you're four and seven because you're going to lose the Dolphins. I'm with you. How are you going to run the table and, and jump? Right now, you'd have to jump like five teams in the in the AFC. I'm with you, but Aaron Rodgers in his head, knowing how good he is, just being like, I come back, we run the table, we win some games. This is just if you're Aaron Rodgers. You're the third to last team in the AFC right now. If you're Aaron Rodgers. Still what, second in the NFC? Yeah. Third. Third in the NFC. Third to last in the AFC. If you're Aaron Rodgers, why, why do you think he would want to come back and play for this team? Like, he's got eyes. He watches the games. I think he's only got so much football left that he just wants to come back and play. But you would, he would hurt himself. I'm with you. I I don't think he should play. I think he should just wait wait till next season. But Aaron Rodgers himself could just want to come back and play. Yeah, I think he's Aaron Rodgers is not stupid to the point where he would come back from like a devastating ankle injury, risk it for a team that really has no chance to do anything. No, I I think you're right, but it's bad. 
There was a at this least is a, this is a bad this is a bad spot you're in. At least you had a sick post game fight. Yeah, you guys Deion you, you Dawkins. scrapped it up in the oh. in the tunnel. Where's our uh, where's our hats? Deion Dawkins sent us hats. Oh, sick over here. Yeah, you guys got into a fight after the game. That was awesome. It, it, at least you're you know you have a little bit of pride. What do we got here? It's uh, you already Schnow University. Oh, nice. Here, hold on. I think I have a, a um, virus on my computer. Hank or someone can someone help me with that after update I've been trying to calculate QB rating and I have no idea what I'm doing that doesn't help my virus on Sorry. my computer I just had the 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 McAfee antivirus thing pop up twice mm -hmm. that feels bad that's what they should call Aaron Rodgers weekly hit how do you oh, yeah, <laughs> that would be a good name for antivirus it. McAfee's antivirus I don't know what I'm gonna do I'm in trouble uh yeah, look at these. You already these show are university. Shout out our guy Deion Dawkins. All time moment when he got pushed. He laid like he was dead. And then he got up and he gave like an applause or, or look for like a curtain call. Yeah. Uh did you see what he did before their last primetime game? No. Uh oh yeah, he, he came in, yeah. He arrived shirtless to the game. Yes. Which is a great move if you end up winning that game. Right. If you lose, it doesn't look so great. Yeah. Doesn't look so great. That's a big but, man. Okay. So the Bills. Offense looked a little better. Uh, Josh was taking some more chances underneath, like, you know, not not taking these risks. Uh, ran the ball well. Maybe Joe Brady has figured something out. Uh, they also had, like, a couple fumble luck where he, you know, there was a fumble and they were all able to get on it. His one interception was a Hail Mary. Uh, the Bills, you needed this win bad. You, you It was a sound beating of the Jets. The Bills do have their entire season in front of them in the fact that if they can somehow go, they have to play at the Eagles and at the Chiefs. If they yeah. can somehow win both those games, the Bills are back to being a true Super Bowl contender. I would say that the Bills, actually, they have the toughest schedule. The they Cowboy, do. The Cowboys have a hard one, too. Eagles, not so easy. But the Bills right now, they have to play the Eagles, Chiefs, Cowboys, C-Words, Patriots that should be a win and then they close out with the Dolphins right so that's we're gonna they have an opportunity right that's the thing they're, is like they're not go, they're not dead dead in a weird way it's kind of nice that they're like all right now we can go find out like either we are or we aren't and if you win a bunch of those games then you definitely are yeah they just they got rid of their entire margin for error yeah 100 percent. yeah um so memes any last thing about the Jets I mean it's so sad you're gonna it, whose lines is anyway on Friday my, Dolphins at Jets. Mm, oh, at Jets. Mm, Dolphins minus twelve. No, 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 eight, no. Eight, 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 eight and a half. I'm gonna say Dolphins nine. What do we got? Seven and a half. Okay, oh, okay. Last thing, Max saw a report that said week sixteen if they're in playoff contention. Somebody told me that it was December second. So if week sixteen, he's not. I just want to no let you know that back. they're. They're not going to be in playoff contention week 16. Again, they're the third to we worst stink. team in we the stink. AFC. We stink. And I'm not saying that their defense is bad. Their uh, defense is actually good, but they've just reached the point today, where today they're like, they we, we have to be perfect, and we're sick of having to be perfect. The punter almost had more passing yards than Zach Wilson. That, that was your best offensive play of the day. It's brutal. It was a great pass. They should have more said play quarterback. Maybe have the special teams coach call plays. I don't know. We're also just stuck with Nathaniel Hackett with Aaron Rodgers hurt. Did Hackett move move up to the booth? Yep, first game in the booth. You hardly ever see that happen, right? It's usually come down from the booth. You've lost all privileges of sitting in a nice, cozy, air conditioned, heated room. Uh, but this is this is a move that I don't I don't recall ever seeing that to a team that's not been playing so well on one side of the ball. Like sending your guy away, like get further away from the guys. Yeah, I've never seen that either. Yeah, but like he. His purpose was, you know, get Aaron Rodgers here. And his purpose also kind of faded after they beat the Broncos. Yeah. Now yeah. they just they they just stink. That was his purpose in going to Denver too. Yep. Was just bring Aaron Rodgers with you. And that was it. Now we just can't score a touchdown. Um so, Brees Hall did apologize to you. He said, I'm sorry to Jets fans, they don't deserve this. I saw so that. at least Brees said that he's do you do you accept his apology? I accept his apology. What about Izzy? How did Izzy do today? I didn't get to check his stat line. Uh, he had one rush for 11 yards. Okay. Yeah, we all bet him to score a touchdown. Yep. Thanks, Memes. Yep. Izzy. 
was what you were. No, he's not. <laughs> that was what you're putting your season off. Yeah, we needed some juice on offense. Thought he was going to spice things up. Nope. From the outside looking in, uh, that was the craziest moment that you should have, like, it should have clicked for you. When we were yeah, talking about this game on back. Friday, and you're like, but we got our third string running back. Yeah. We, <sighs> wish I could go back to Friday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, guess what? We got a, a, a return of a segment before we uh, get to who's back of the week. It is the Direct TV. Uh, overly direct take presented by Direct TV. Direct TV is the ultimate destination for pro football. It's where fans can get their pro football fix this season. Whether you're watching games live on TV or streaming app, Direct TV has you covered, and you can get Direct TV without a satellite. Get a four hundred dollar reward card with twenty four month Direct TV package and receipt of twenty three twenty four NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube. Offer not endorsed or associated details at directtv.com. I know we have DirecTV here in the office. We love DirecTV. If you're a football fan, if you're a football guy, you got to have DirecTV. So get a $400 reward card with a 24-month DirecTV package and receipt of 2324 NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube. Offer not endorsed or associated details at directtv.com. All right, overly direct take. Hank. My overly direct take is that I think the Bills are going to make the Super Bowl. Whoa. Oh, okay. And then lose to the Cowboys. Whoa. That would be so painful. So, so painful for Bills fans. Damn. Why would you even put that out there, Hank? I'm just being overly direct. You are. I, I think I think I think the take. Bills, everyone's kind of written off the Bills. Uh sometimes, you know, going through a such a bad loss like they did last week can kind of turn things around. They've been there before. I think they're gonna rally uh and, and make a deep run. All right. That's an overly direct take. Oh, super overly direct. Okay. PFT, your overly direct take. Uh, I think the Texans are going to win the division. That's my direct take. I think it's going to happen. I think they're going to take it. They're not going to look back. I like that. Direct. They got to win on Sunday. But I like that. Uh, all right, my overly direct take. I think the Chiefs minus two and a half tomorrow night is stealing money. Tonight. Max? I don't think you heard that. My overly direct take, Max, is the Chiefs minus two and a half tonight. How, how is, is that? How money. could you not have heard that? What are you doing? Patrick Mahomes Me at home. Technical issues. Andy Reid off a of bye. You can't All they got to do is win the game, pretty much. Sure. I, I, I love that both of you are thinking this way because PFT Wait. was saying the same thing earlier. Okay. I do like it. I like. Yeah, the no, I love that you guys like the Chiefs. Love I love that. that you love that we I, like the Chiefs. Why do you love that, Max? I love that you, you guys love are it. dumb. You two oh, are dumb. Oh, really? Yes. Title and Towers smart. Yes. No, but you two are dumb. So I'm happy that the two dumb guys over there really the like the Chiefs. Out. I like this. Yeah. The Phillies coming out big time. You know who's off. smart? Stanford Steve. Stanford Steve loves the loves the Eagles tomorrow. Okay, that's what he said. Fuck off. That's mm -hmm. that's a, that's a report. We got we got all the Swifts in the building. <laughs> Meeting of the parents. No, no yeah. No, are Taylor's they moving out. too? Canceled. Are canceled. they moving too canceled. quickly? Oh, they canceled. Well, no, I th I think she's out, right? Yeah, she's out because they they she had a show that she was supposed to do yesterday that they rescheduled to tomorrow. Yeah, because a fan Argentina. died. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know in the Brazil. reason. Brazil. I didn't know the reason. Heat. Too much heat. Taylor Scott. <sighs> wow. Damn, Hank. <laughs> Clip that for me. I'm gonna tweet that out. Hank, the fuck. So. Taylor Swift's a murderer. Do you think she's a murderer, Hank? I I didn't say that. You said Taylor Scott. What does that mean? Travis Scott also had people die at his concerts. Mm -hmm. It was a good thing. Bad thing. No, but I I don't think that means that makes either of them murderers. I'll bet there's a lot of Swifties out there that if if they had to die, they would like to die at a Taylor Swift concert. I'll change the headline. I'll say Hank thinks Taylor Swift is no different than Travis Scott. Fair. <laughs> Yeah, they're great artists. Okay, Jake, your overly direct take? My overly direct take, guys, is that Joe Flacco will lead the Cleveland Browns to an AFC North Division championship. No. Okay. I like it. You've been listening to P. I mean, everything PFT was They're saying, a half game was out. Just delusional. What are, what, what, regular it? season meetings. So Joe Flacco down to the tiebreaker. Couldn't even throw a ball for the Jets last year. Yeah, but now he's rested. Like, you were talking about Joe Flacco in 2012 when he, he still was, like, he was okay back he was then. He's perfect in that postseason. It's 10 years later. All Joe needs to know 11 years is later. that if he has another great run, he's going to get another huge contract. I'll say this. It could happen. Exactly. It's not going to be because of Joe Flacco. Right. No. Right. That's that's the entire point is, like, Joe is like a skeleton of what formerly Joe was. But 
if he just does the thing where he attempts 15 passes a game and just relies on the defense, then people will get very, very mad if he happens to win a second Super Throw Bowl. some PIs. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. If Joe if Joe Flacco is starting in the playoffs, they won't make it past the divisional round. That's my overly direct take. That's overly Part direct. Two. That's overly direct. Jake, I like your take. Thank you. It's overly direct. It's overly direct, direct TV. Overly direct Jake of the week. Uh, okay. Let's finish up. We got who's back of the week. Uh, before we do who's back of the week, though, Roback question, R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com, promo code TAKE, 20% off your first purchase, Q-Zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts. Go to Roback.com right now and fleeces, Roback.com. Before we do who's back of the week, my Roback.com question is, PFT, I think the fans want to hear how uh, the weekend was. So oh, let's talk about it. It was, uh, it was. I have one bone to pick with you. It's very exciting. All right, uh, pick away. Danny Boy Kane was never bit by a bear. I, that's he was, he was attacked not, by a bear. But he I was, it said to be attacked by a bear. That's a, my only bone. After I said it, I realized I said the wrong word. But it, factor, and that's fa- probably why he was upset. Fact, that clear it with him first. Factor got to be factor <laughs> fiction. Um, a bear attack implies a bite. No, it doesn't. I think it might. No. Well, no. Big Absolutely guy. doesn't. Okay. Let me, let me, not, it let me step like in. A scratch and like a, Let me step in because Danny Boy is going to be very upset that you did not clear that with him before bringing his name up on oh, this show. Oh, I, I did. I DM'd him. I talked to Danny Boy all the time. And you said I would like to bring I was like, I'm going to bring you up and I'm going to clear it that that never happened. So I said it didn't happen. I said he never right, got bit. He bit never got never swine even. flu. That was my only thing. You crushed it otherwise. I heard he is running for mayor. Is that true? Well, nope. Not running for mayor, doesn't have an NIL deal. Okay. You crush it, PFT, except for you you didn't get two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, so, which I would have had to match. Uh, all right, so would have been a problem. So so when when they brought me out and they had me attempt the field goal and it was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the local food bank, I didn't know that it was gonna be that amount of money. I had no idea what was gonna happen. They were just like, Hey, they want you to kick a field goal. I was like, Okay, great, let's do it. So I step out and then Pat says it's two hundred fifty thousand dollars to charity. And in that moment, I could not help myself i just said and big cat's gonna match and then the split second after i say you can see the look on my face where i'm like fuck i might have just committed big cat to i was i was in. i would have matched yeah i would have doubled actually i would have matched too. um and then i had to like try to take it back and then in the back of my head i was thinking like if i make this there's a good chance that people will just hit big cat up for 200 oh so it's big cat's fault no, no, I'm just saying, like, it's my fault Listen, for saying it. We live in a match world. I would have matched. Uh, but either way, you that, crushed that, it. So you intentionally missed it. That was a mistake. It. I intentionally missed it to the right so that Big Cat, so that yeah, he I would not have that. to pay $250,000 to charity. It, so some are calling me a hero um, for not giving money to charity. Not the people that need food. They're, you're right. They're not. They're not. Would you have matched? Right no. It's so hey, easy Hank, to say you would have matched. Just, he missed the kick, you idiot. I would have matched. I would have quadrupled. Thanks, yeah. I would have doubled, and then I would have matched the quadruple. I would have made. I would have taken a one dollar salary until everyone was fed. It was a if ba- he had made the kick. It was a very bad kick. Uh, the whole. I'm not going to say anything bad about no, Herbie. Herbie, f- Herbie fucked you. Herb- it was also really sunny, and you had a jacket on. And it was yeah, it was windy too out there. Herbie's dog was really the highlight of the week. Ben, I got to hang out with Ben backstage. Max walked in there, and then Herbie's dog made Went a beeline straight to me uh, because he knew that Wrong. he's an emotional support Wrong. dog, and he knew that Max he number was, one is a neurotic he, freak. Number we were two, that really he probably good he sensed how nervous Max was around the dog, and he's such a good dog that he went right nope. over to Max. No, nope. he was like, "No, nope. dogs gonna... know good guys," <laughs> and <laughs> and that dog went over guy. right over you're to not the a good goodest guy. guy. It was a, it is goodest guy. So when we were we were meeting Ben, you probably thought you were a dog. Nah, fine, <laughs> probably started like, sniffing uh, your ass. Dog, dog guy. We all agreed that that Ben is the goodest boy. Yeah, I've, uh-huh. not, I've never made a goodester boy. Than the ben. best dog I've ever he's, met before in my good. entire life. But yeah, then w- once I got on stage, it was like that part was easy, like hanging out next to Lee Corso. He's like a very funny guy, sweet guy, um, and just sitting up there and chopping up. That was like the easy part of it. That was really fun. And it honestly was like a holy shit moment. Thinking back to when I was on that campus, had no idea what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And then somehow I'm back there during college game day. It's like that to me. That was the one day where I felt like maybe maybe my life is the Truman Show. Maybe this yeah. is just a gigantic prank on me. Well, uh, you you crushed it, and I was very proud of you. It was awesome to see. It was like I mean, like you just said, like going back to your campus. Like that's such a cool moment. It. What, what are you shaking your head, Max? Memes, nothing. Oh, you you crushed it. I think everyone watching AWLs, everyone here was very proud of you. It was very cool. Like you you were throwing fucking fastballs everywhere. Uh, like all your lines were hitting, 
and it was probably awesome to be able to be like, I'm back on campus to see my undefeated football team. At the time, undefeated football Undefeated team. Yeah, at the it time. Was, it was great. I apologize. At, for the record, I apologize for nothing. Max, people are saying nothing. Max is the reason why they lost. I, Not me, but I, people are saying that I was watching the game because I was invested in the whole day. So I was sitting at the park with my kids watching the game. That fourth and 18 was such an insane comeback. And I was like, this is about to be the perfect day for PFT yeah. where like the comeback and everything. It would have been great. Streamers going down the stadium. Would have been great. However, uh, we still should be playing for the Sun Belt Championship. I like, agree. One, one loss, like we're still very much in first place in that division. But, you know, rough ending to the, to the, to the game, but it was still an awesome day. I regret nothing. I regret... I do not regret saying that I would declare JMU to be national champions if they went undefeated because I would. Well, and you had already said it, so it yeah. already been said. Do you regret bringing Max? So I regret he is a loser. I regret a little bit bringing Max. Just I didn't think about the Max vibe, the whole loser vibe. Uh, but Max was a great traveling companion. Max and memes. Um, but he is a loser. Like people are saying that he is the reason why JMU lost. It's a good possibility. The funniest part of the day by far, though, was when I was walking out to kick the field goal, and. Uh, Max is walking right behind me. He looks like a villain in, in Home Alone, like one of the burglars. And he's got like this beanie pulled down tight. He's wearing like a black jacket. And he's walking behind me, and this kid just screams at me. He's like, "Who was like you from the past?" Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was it was my my former self. <laughs> and he was like, "Hey PFT, tell Max that he's a fucking loser." And I was like, well, "Max is right behind me." And he's like, "Hey, hey Max, you're a fucking loser." It was Eagles great. Suck. Yeah, that's not that's not how the clip went. How did it go? It had nothing to do with me. Oh, it said tell Max the Eagles fucking tell, suck. Tell Max the Eagles suck. Yeah, and then it was, and you were like, he, he's right here. Tell him. He's like, got so he got so excited to tell me to my. He was like, hey Max, the Eagles suck. <laughs> Fuck the Eagles. <laughs> Tell Max that the Eagles fucking suck. He's right here. Max, the Eagles suck. Fuck the Eagles. So people shouldn't do that to Max when he's in public. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I, I, mean, oh, I have no problem with that guy. That guy, that guy rocked. No, but yeah, if you I, see Max in public, Philly don't, don't, don't say yeah. that. I also yeah. got a small. Don't say he sucks. No. I got a small. Don't say he was the reason why that JMU lost because I've heard people saying that and I don't. I will not say it, but people are saying it. We I, had a couple interactions like that. We were waiting in line for the bathroom, and this guy was like, hey, I have a friend uh, who wanted me to tell you something really mean, uh, but I'm not going to say it. And then he was just like, oh, he wants you to know that you're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. And I got a small taste of what it must have been like to be Hank for like two years where I was walking around the, the tailgate section. And shout out to all the students there that were hanging out. They were great. Except for the one guy that kept offering me coke, and I was like, "Dude, I can't. No, I can't do coke." That's in, why you got to bring the middle of this smokes tailgate. with you. Yeah, this is a nice speed bump for everyone. Um, but I was getting some numbers yelled at me, and I can only imagine what Hank's life must have been like <laughs> for all that time, where every interaction that he had was just a stranger yelling a number to him. Yeah, getting that before he moved to Chicago was—I don't know what I would have done. This, this summer. entire summer would have been miserable for yeah. you. But yeah, it was a it was a great time. It was very cool. Had a, very cool. To had see. a blast there. Would have liked to win that game, but uh, it wasn't meant to be. Would you have rather won the game or made the kick for the kids? I'm at the game. Uh, made the I would have rather made the kick, Hank. Good question. No no doubt about it. Because then Big Cat would have matched. I would have matched, and I would have doubled his match. And I actually, so much money would have gone to the food bank. I actually said to my kids at the park, I was like, if Jamie pulls this off, I'm just going to donate two hundred fifty thousand dollars anyway. But unfortunately, but they didn't. And so I couldn't. And we'll never have that. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Incredible day, though. Yeah. I, I, I was, like, really, really hoping they were going to win that game because it was it felt like it was storybook how they came back at the end. You know what maybe the best part of the day was? I, I name-dropped Pole Assassin, and we all remember the scandal from Texas football a couple years ago where the coach's uh, girlfriend, who was an exotic dancer who has a monkey named Gia that dances with her on stage, mm -hmm. there, was a yeah. there was a biting incident at Halloween I mentioned her on the show, and that's when Reese was like, oh, shit, you are, you're like a walking message board. Yep, that's me. Uh, I go backstage afterwards, and Stanford Steve gets on FaceTime with Pole Assassin. Oh, hell yeah. And I got to talk to Pole Assassin. She's like, yeah, my monkey's right here. She's like, thank, <laughs> thank you for the love. I appreciate you. A lot of people have said bad things about me. Thanks for standing up for me. So I love it. Happy to do it, Pole Assassin. Speaking um, of which, did you guys see Chiefs of Holic? There's a documentary coming out? Oh, yeah. no. Tomorrow. Where? Uh, I saw a trailer on- I think ESPN uh, Plus. Yeah, it's- like I can't believe they turned around that fast. I think they're talk. I think they have him on record letters from jail. It's like serial. Yeah, like you are now receiving a call from an inmate at a correctional facility. He basically did everything that Billy said he was going to do. That would have been great if Billy had done it. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, but yeah, great, great day for you. It was, it was very cool to see. Um, shout out Lee Corso. Yeah, I know he's old. 
But we got to be nice to where America sucks with old people. We're really mean to them. We are like like Al Michaels. We got to be like uh, the Italians, where you just live with your elderly people. And there, there's still forever. something great. Tom my veto. I think my favorite part on stage was when Lee Corso just looked at me. and Goes that pick stinks. Yeah. I felt like, like it was, Kansas State. How many people? Yeah, unfortunately. So I want to address the people out there because I, I am getting a lot of shit from people that that took Kansas. I lost State a lot of money on Kansas against State the spread. Of you. Well, it was our friend Rico Bosco. <laughs> oh, it's because of him. It was his game of the year, and he said it mean a lot to me if you could shout out the game of the year. I did, and besides that, like I think everybody came away from that appearance being like PFT knows ball. He's a respected college football analyst. But how could he give me the game of the year for Kansas State? And to those people that I let down, I'm sorry that I let you down, but I trusted a good friend of mine, Rico. And unfortunately, uh, his game of the year didn't hit. So I'm not putting blame on Rico, to be clear for this. It came out of my mouth. I said Kansas State. Oh, I am. I lost a lot. But I was that. I was advised to Hank. I was advised strongly one. to take Kansas State, and I'm sorry to anybody that I let down. Unfortunately, it's I, just, I trusted a friend too much. Do you and know that's what on your me. game day record was? No, you I made like 15 picks, right? I, I didn't look it up. I basically just took down – they gave me the list on uh, on Friday night, and I just basically like picked the teams that I thought I could write like a two-second joke about. Fair. Yeah. That's a good yeah. strategy. Yeah. It's very good strategy. All right. Uh, who's back? The week? Um, and check out PMTV because the boys were with him. So when is that coming out? Tuesday? Tuesday. Let's see if When's Hank, Viva TV we'll coming see, out? Let's see if Hank retweets it. Uh, Wednesday. <laughs> okay. That narrative is going now. No, 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 no. We, we, you we, started the narrative. No, we're, we've. I've been getting what, a lot of tweets about it. No, you, you haven't. Yeah, no, I have. you haven't. You know oh, yes, I that, have. You, know you started the narrative, and it's going. No, you know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like Max might be in Hank's doghouse. Ooh, did no, Hank have we, a little we, talking to with the boys? No, he, we, had, he, we had. A, we had. Did he had, quell I, the mutiny? Are you in Hank's doghouse? No. Did you get one of them to flip Hank? That's what you got to do to get the mutiny off. You got to be like Max. If you, if if you uh, come back to my side, I'll make sure I take care of you. Memes is out. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I asked the boys on the flight down there. I was like, "If you guys squashed the beef with Hank, you guys talked to Hank yet?" And Max was like, "Yeah, I talked to Hank. We're good." And he was like, "I haven't talked to him." <laughs> <laughs>
one guy caught it, the other guy, his teammate, like tackled him, and then they started celebrating and hugging. So rugby. I, I had no idea what was going on. Uh, but it it looked electric. The fans seemed to have a good time. But yeah, I guess Swag Kelly is the best CFL player, which yeah. is awesome. And he should be in the NFL. Yes. The he Jets should, should the sign. Thanks, yes, right. Absolutely. Um, my other who's back of the week is the Kansas State crops judging team. They won their 32nd national championship yesterday. The Damn. the biggest dynasty maybe in the history of college Wish athletics. Wish we had game of the year on that. I know. Can, I, the crops judging team, I've seen the pictures of them in, in action. They look so intense. They are dialed in. They're like got microphones on seeds and shit. I don't know what they're looking for, but apparently they're just – no one can touch them. There's got to be like six schools that do this or something, right? I think there's probably a couple dozen good schools, but Kansas State is just the best to ever do it. I believe it. Shout out to them. It's, it's, sounds the fishy. it's the best dynasty in all of sports. 32 is too much. Well, it's like the, the Texas Tech, they are the best meat judges, right? They win all the meat judging championships. Yes. Kansas State is that, except just for crops. Love it. For vegetables. Shout out Kansas State. Ema. Yeah. Uh All right, my who's back of the week is... Our guy, Jaden Daniels, eight touchdowns, eight touchdowns on Saturday night against Georgia State. Uh, and that's crazy that he did that against Georgia State. He, yeah, he lit up Georgia State. Uh, eight touchdowns is eight touchdowns. Yeah, but especially against Georgia State. Uh, it was an incredible performance from him. Uh, I love that LSU was like, fuck it, we're going to go like, you know, playing video game style, just get our guy as many touchdowns as possible. He is now the favorite to win the Heisman. I love it. So let's finish the job. Texas A&M next week, let's finish the fucking job. I do. I like the fact that LSU is now just strictly making this season about getting him the Heisman Trophy. Yeah. I love that. Let's keep that going. I don't think that you can honestly make a case that it should be anybody except for Jane Daniels. And I'm only saying that – as a true college football fan, not because I put a future on him winning the Heisman Trophy. And I would agree. I'd concur. You know ball. Yeah. I know except that you know for, ball, so I'm going to trust Kansas I'm going to trust what you're saying right now and say I agree. Okay. Yeah. Jane Daniels for Heisman. There is no second choice. We'll also we'll, – we'll talk some – so Wednesday. So this week, uh, Wednesday we'll have a show. Friday we will not have a show. Wednesday's show will be uh, extra long so that if you have to work on Friday, you first should – quit your job uh because that's bullshit but if you have to work on friday we'll give a point in wednesday's show where you can stop and save some because we're going to do the thanksgiving day games black friday games talk college football we have mike florio uh we're gonna have to talk some harbaugh because i think that him accepting his uh punishment is a sign he might be on the outs which i'm excited for except he might go to the chargers which i'm not excited for. i also heard the raiders did you say that no, I, I heard the Raiders. It was There was a report that came out that that's one of the teams that he's looking at. But it also might be Harbaugh linking himself to the Raiders again yeah. so that he could maybe get a salary increase. Yeah. But I don't see Michigan giving him, like, a massive – No, I, I think he took the I think he took the, the punishment and was like, I'll just – I'm focused on this year. Let's win some games. No more distractions. Clearly you guys want me and you want me alone. I'll be out of your hair in four weeks. Yeah. Uh, all right. Jake, finish us off. My who's back of the week is Feast Week. Oh. It is going on right now. One of the best weeks of the year for a sports fan. A lot of college basketball. It's 1230 in the morning Eastern time as I say this, and we're watching an overtime game right now. There is college Love basketball it. like 18 hours a day. The Maui Invitational. I know it's only November, but it is one of the most loaded fields you'll ever see who we got no it's my favorite it's my favorite week of the year i lose all my money um so purdue gonzaga is a quarterfinal game and that's a matchup between two top 11 teams who's shamanad got kansas love it i love the shamanad yeah. yeah and still in hawaii but they moved it from maui to honolulu oh i don't like that why would happen what's going on with the rims there was unfortunate oh, events fire yeah were you hank was that were you making a joke about maui yeah it was Oh, sorry, it's apologies. Okay. It's all right. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Yeah. So it's you're a big man for admitting that. Yeah. I actually the why would happen is a good joke, usually. But it's, now the soft rims, we don't know if they're soft rims. Yeah. So it's a different location, but same state. Okay. I, I always Hallelujah. love when they have like the palest basketball coaches wearing the Hawaiian shirt. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like the the guys that have not been outside that have not left like a, a basketball arena for the last six years. And we have some characters in this year's event too with those teams. UCLA's yeah. in it, so. You, McCronin, Shaka Smart, Marquette, 
Oh, Mick, Mick Cronin wearing a Hawaiian shirt is going to pop. Yeah. It's going to be so, great. It's going to be awesome all week. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. It's Peggy Kaczynski. <laughs> the the they Cubs won the World Series. They're showing the flashback because <laughs> they're, you know, we we're gonna get Shohei. I actually, I like this what they're doing. This is better than right Wipeout. Now. So yeah, so we're, we're gonna, watching. We're get Shohei, we're watching dude. TV we right Craig now Council. and the local news w- without any other like, hey, this is a taped thing. Uh, message off to the side is just playing flashbacks to the Cubs winning the World Series. When there's like a bad week in the news, I fully support. Yeah news stations re-airing like really fun times that well, were happening i think they're just showing like hey this is what we're hoping happens again now that oh it might be actually the anniversary that's what it is today's probably the anniversary it's also the anniversary november 19th oh no it's definitely not <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's the anniversary of malice at the palace i don't that's fucking know that i don't know why they're doing this they're just doing it okay just, i like it remind people of happier times. we're getting show hey dude i got my i i did my uh season ticket draft i have I moved up the seats, so everyone in this room should hope for Shohei. Can you imagine a lot of seats? How far Shohei's going to hit balls with the wind blowing out? Oh man, it's going to be incredible. Yeah, November nineteenth would be pretty late to win the World Series. <laughs> Is that when they did the parade? No, no, I was just way off. They're just doing a, they're just doing a retrospective because it was, you know, a fun time. It was a very fun time. Uh, okay, great show, boys. Wednesday we have Florio on. Uh, let's finish with numbers. 18. No, 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 19. 71. Three. 19. Do 80. Number 19. 8. 71. Pug. Shane? Pug had 88. 20. Pug, how are your ankles? 20. What do you got, Shane? 10. For Shane. Pug, rep- Pug uh, signing his tweets, Pug is the awesome. greatest thing of all time. I am Pug underscore on Twitter. The cat gets it, 71. Yes. yes. Wow. I needed that after the Javante Williams thing. Where'd 71 come from? Uh, I've been doing the reverse of 17. Ah. Congrats. Congrats. Yes. Congrats, big cat. Congrats. Thank you. Welcome to the club. Yeah, yeah now, now, now I got to get Now are you guys going to align and go two. against us? Oh, for sure. For Hank sure. and I. Hank, come here. Come here. Imagine never getting this. Look at this. How, wow. how about this turn? Imagine wow. never getting this. Imagine never getting this. Not me and Hank. Not <laughs> us. Ha 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 ha. Fuck all of you. Hank and I are the best at this. Why I, are you on Hank's side? I like, uh, why am I on Hank's no, side? No, Hank, no, no. Hank, Hank, have you ever gotten this? I have. Have you? Yes, I have. We were, ju- we were just about to do a. Uh, yeah. Of you. Oh. Max, how do you not understand? I After know, but it's fucking Hank. Show. Like the whole thing nah. is just everyone against Hank. Nah, it's Listen, everyone against nah, Hank. Nah. This can turn very guy, quickly. Hank, day one guy. I've known Hank the longest in this room. Facts. Hank is always right. Why you, you guys got to shut the fuck up about, about, about this whole Viva TV thing. <laughs> Thank you. And start promoting. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Hank knows the fucking vision of this room. Max, w- one of us has to get it next. Yeah. Or else well, guess what? You're gonna join us. We're gonna, we're gonna get turned on. You're never gonna get it. Never gonna get it, never gonna get it, never gonna get it, never gonna get it. Hank and I have gotten it. Whew! That's kind of crazy in our first month, two correct guesses. Well, it's just Hank and I are better than you guys. You that's, are. That's a fact. That should be yeah. three. Hank, Hank, right Hank and I are just superior brain intellect than everyone else in this room. This sucks. It's so easy. All you gotta do is say the number. Hank, tell me how you got it. Uh, I just said 52 <laughs> and it popped right up. Dude, I said 71, boom, pop right up. It's that easy. It's so easy. Isn't it, so, is it so easy, Hank? I mean, it's never been easier. BFT, have you thought no, about just no, guessing I the right I, number? No, I don't. I don't. I'm you should start. just try I'm to guess do that right. next time. This Hank, is making make me wait, so much more angry than Hank getting it. Hank, you Hank, getting it and just Hank, being such a fucking asshole is making. Hey, Hank, when you got it, did you? Were you just like, you know what? I'm just gonna guess the right number. Yeah, I was thinking about it. I was like, I would, could I get the Let's wrong number show. or I'd yeah. rather get the right yeah. number? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to pick the right number. And then I did. Yeah, I was like, look, there's 100 numbers. Yes, Let me just pick guys. the one that is going to come up. Honestly, Don't tell the, me best, what to do, the Max. best part about this whole thing is Max is trying to run the show. You cost like, me a game this week. Edit, blah, 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 blah. I could talk about this. Oh, we oh. can talk about getting the numbers. If you guys want to shut off the lights, Hank and I will just hang out talking about getting the numbers, which you guys have never gotten. 
I got to turn on Max now. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what do you mean you have to turn on? Oh, me? oh, you know what? He cost you the. He yeah, cost you a yeah, fucking cost bowl game. game. Yeah. He cost me the you national the championship. Year, game. Six he cost saying. me the national championship. I didn't Max cost anyone also, shit. One thing people didn't he, are did he break a camera? Yeah, I, w- I was about to bring that up. One thing did you didn't see behind the scenes. I did not break a camera. Max broke a camera on college game day because he bumped into it because you were clumsy. I. Did it, I, wait, I was so clumsy. Max hit yeah. a camera, and then the next thing that happened is that lens. it stopped working. Yeah, and then the the and makeup artist came up. Working. Oh well, a lens. She, Those are cheap, right? The, was, the lady came up to me. She no. was like, "Your friend Max broke one of our cameras here." <laughs> she was busting my balls hard, like yeah. for a while. Was she busting your balls or like no? Being like you just yeah. broke a lens. I think she had a she had a realistic gripe with Max that he caused twenty thousand dollars worth of damage. Why are you, we're on the same team here, PS? I don't think that we are, Max. I don't think you understand how this game works. Like, I thought we were all on a team until you said it's everyone versus Hank. Now it's then very it's, clear it's just me and you, Hank. Yeah. And we're foxhole guys. What you have to understand at this point, Max, is that Hank and, and Big Cat have a powerful alliance right now. Mm-hmm. And yes. we now it's every man for himself. Yeah. Whoever we, gets I got to get inside that alliance. Whoever gets it next, we would love, we would love nothing more than one of you dimwits to just guess the right number and be part of our crew. But until that happens, we have no choice but to call you dimwits because, again, Hank, how did you get it? I set a number and then it popped there it right is. up. I also was just like, already had this guess the right number, and then it popped right up. We literally already did this conversation. Max, well, we could do, keep doing it. Max, here's the thing <laughs> that you're, you're failing to grasp is that um, the next person to get the lotto ball actually is going to have some time where they can enjoy making fun of the people that haven't got yes. it yet. Yes. true. After yes. that next person gets it, then by the time you get it in that fourth spot, you're not going to have much Correct. time to like make fun of the others. It shifts because there's, what, eight of us in here? Yeah. You Once have to you be... get past like the four or five, then, it's, then we just got to pick on one person. But right now, Hank and I are in the club and you guys... No, 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 no. Also, you only have 100 episodes to be elite. Otherwise, then it's you're That's below a fact. average. That's a fact. That you just made that up right now. No, no, he's right. That's Hank, a, that's Hank how many how many episodes did it take you the first time? Yeah, no, he was bad. But it guess took what? Me, what, Jake? Like twelve episodes of the new. It episode? took yeah. me like three episodes. Uh, to guess get what? It. Guess what? That was the old machine. This is the new machine. Right, which? Just, what have you done for who, us lately? Who designed this new machine? Uh, like Hank Jordan. Jordan. That's interesting. Yeah, flags fly forever. You're the first one to always say that. It's yeah, that's true. It's interesting you, that Hank. Yeah, that Hank designed. Also, it. thank you, Jake, for not announcing it and ruining my moment. <laughs> when you do that with Hank. What? When you like, you're like, oh my god! Yeah, no, when you were like, when oh, I you said did it, and I was mad. I was mad because you made yeah. me mad about Hank getting it, but I needed to just listen. I just said it's all good. Got it. Okay, I'll have because to listen. For, I'll it, listen to that back because I actually will like that one. It's in some for some people. It's not a visual medium. Yeah, that's so true. You just I'm, hear screaming. You don't know what's I'm gonna going on. I'm going to listen that yeah. back, Jake. I'm going to make an NFT out of that. I'm going to make an NFT out of that. I'm going to listen to that all the time. Jake, I just didn't like it when you did it for Hank, can you, obviously. Yeah. Can you do a do-do-do-do? Do-do-do-do. Big then, guy gets the lottery ball. Yeah. That's no, good. well, also Hank, too, because it's the two of us that we've gotten it. So, please. Do-do-do-do. Big cat and Hank get the lottery ball. Oh, that was great. That was beautiful. And then can you do a do-do-do-do? That's just for everything after Max says anything. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Max is never going to get it. Eagles tonight, though, right? <laughs> you guys are dumb. No. <laughs> hey, do we need to say it again? We got the lottery ball. You didn't. You're still dumb. We're two smart people in you're here. still dumb. It's not you. And you're not good at picking games. So well, guess what? Picking game. I picked That's this. not a game. I picked it. That's this not a game. Is it in a game? Uh, it's not it a game. It is a number. It's, it's literally a game. game. It's, it's game. literally not a game. Not a football game. Oh, now you're putting on qualifiers. Game. It's a game. Max is so bad. Game. So, so bad, bad at these arguments. PFT, you got to get it. Love you guys. I want you. PFT, I want Love you, you guys. On Love you guys. So. I know. I, I Listen, I'm the only realistic want person you. that... Yes. I'm, I'm feeling the heat right now. You are. And Yeah, that's why I... Because you're lumped in with the idiot. Yeah, You're in the idiot group. Yeah, I'm in there like... You're an idiot. You know what's the worst thing? The worst thing for me... Would be no. if if Jake yeah. if Jake gets it next, <laughs> and then it's me, Max, Memes, and Pug oh. that haven't got it. Shane and, Shane and Shane, and and now I'm in the group with like the guy that got crossed up in basketball, and then just Max and Memes who are losers. I, that's gonna be tough for me. Yeah, PFT, I'll admit I'm a loser right now. No, yeah. no Jake, I'm saying like thank you, Jake. It. Thank you, Jake. It's Appreciate really your honesty. It's yeah. really me and you. 
that are fighting like hell for this next lottery ball spot. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. Why aren't I fighting like hell? <laughs> because you're so lottery. stupid, you're never going to get it, you idiots. I got it within like three tries of playing this On stupid the old fucking machine. game. Yeah, it's the same fucking game. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Because you've never gotten this. Yeah. Actually, for them, it's harder for them because they're only 97, 98 balls in the other machine. This is exactly. Yeah, this Shut is up, way Jake. I'm just saying. Jake, Thank stop. you, Jake. Great point, Jake. That was Thanks. the nerd Jake, nugget of the Jake, week. Statistics. Nerd nugget not of the, the week. Same game. <laughs> I didn't have a my number in the machine. For I like said I love you guys never five minutes ago. The <laughs> show's over. Max, memes is, you memes has never got Max. This. You are so, a loser. A point, Max. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, good point, Max. That's a good point. It's more impressive than never get it than get it. That's true, memes. That's true. Loser talk. That's absolute loser talk. Memes has never ever gotten it. Max, Late. you're Can never gonna, this show? You're Love never you guys. Get it, Max. Love you guys. Love you guys. Show's over. Love you guys.